What's up, everybody? My name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. Let me hit play on this. Or oh, that's not play. No, pause. And I got. Come on. There it is. Um. Hi. <laughs> look at this. Look at this situation going on here. Look. I look like a hundred percent less homeless. <laughs> In the chat, Jonathan King, Aaron FPV, Keith Drones, Jonathan King again, Slowy FPV, Rick Zapata, Frank Nicholas, Josh P FPV, Keith Drones, Obese. <laughs> I will never be able to read Obese Quads' name without laughing. Del Squatcho FPV, Bill Grimes, Underdog FPV, Pixel Pusher FPV, Beep Tube, Frank Nicholas is here, Dauntless H, Obese Quads again. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Obese Quad. I don't, I, I don't know why it's so goddamn funny, but it's just it's just terrific. License to Drive is here. Del Squatcho, FPV, Dauntless H, Ken Hill, Patrick Ruen, The Beginning, FPV, Rick Zapata, <gasps> Jonathan King, T-Bird, FPV, Schnoids. Schnoids is here. What's up, Schnoids? That's a crazy sounding word. Ken Hill, Grumpy FPV, Jonathan King, Dauntless H, Mustang Pilot 1, Private Island FPV, Abnormal FPV, Mustang Pilot 1 again, Chuck Toe, Schnoids again. <laughs> Schnoids. Uh, Big Willy FPV, Archangel, B-Man FPV, mm, Ken Hill, Patrick Ruan, Slowy FPV, Del Squatcho again. I like Del Squatcho too. What a, what a satisfying sequence of letters to 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 behold and to say with your human face greg womack b-man fpv again uh, all right we're getting into some duplicate 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 free lojo is here msh is here abnormal fpv is here he just typed the number one at some point that's coming through with his name that's abnormal what a flight private island says thank you patrick ruan says what rig is that that's my 610 gram all up uh glide with a session five t-motor that was the beginning of the pandemic so back then it was t-motor f40 pro twos yeah all the things uh big willy fpv mwad dib fpv why does my dib sound so familiar? Um, all right, I think I got everybody. If I missed you, I'm sorry. You just gotta, you gotta, you gotta, I don't know. <laughs> you gotta have a name like uh, Del Squatcho or, uh, or Fat Quads, <laughs> apparently. Jonathan King asks, uh, my Mobula 6 25,000 KV is getting horrible flight times. What would you troubleshoot? Frame is a bit banged up. New props, new pigtail, relatively new lipos, TBS 340 mAh. I don't know anything about TBS batteries. Um, I mean, I know that they don't make their own batteries, so uh, those are, uh, yeah, just uh, relabeled. I, I wonder who, who makes them. I wonder what those are. I wonder if those are a GNB or what. Um, but... Uh, um... So here's the question. Jonathan King um, posted a bunch here um, saying that uh, not getting the run times that he used to get. Um, that's tough. Um, so it could totally be, and, and, and I know this seems crazy, but it could totally be that like as you get more used to it, you're using more throttle. And those 25,000 KV0802s, they will eat your batteries if you're using a handful of if, if you're just like plowing on the throttle they will chew through batteries um i get i only get about two minutes from them ripping around here in a 900 square foot tiny little apartment <laughs> um so yeah if if you're flying like a bigger space or if you're just getting more used to it um it could absolutely be just you know you're just those motors are very hungry um if so here's my question for you john um what like try to figure out what the hell happened like it this didn't happen in a vacuum right like it, it didn't start getting shittier runtime just because um although technically it could have if you've put enough batteries through it um those happy model well 
pretty much all of the 0802s, the only 0802s that have bearings are the the new, the brand new, not brand new, but the newish Beta FPV ones and the iFlight um, Zing 0802s. Those are the only two that have bearings. All the rest of the 0802s are on bushings. So technically speaking, I don't think this is the case, but technically, um, if you've put enough batteries through that rig, you may have worn down the bushings in the motors, and that'll allow the, the motor shafts to just kind of bang around, and, and what can happen is the bearing will spin in its seat, right? Like, or the bushing, rather, will spin in its seat. You're supposed to have, like, this is the stator, and there's, you know, there's supposed to be a cup for the bearing, well, there is a cup for the bearing and the bushing to sit in, so they put, they press or they glue the bearing or bushing into that, and then the motor shaft goes through it. Um, so what can happen is the the motor shaft can and it can um, uh, burrow out the burrow can like wallow out the center of the bearing, and now the motor shaft can wobble around. The other thing that can happen is the the bushing can can move around in the seat in in the stator seat, and that's much worse if the if the bushing starts spinning all kinds of weird shit happens because it'll start spinning and it, it'll generate this vibration in the cup and then the, the motor shaft will, will be all shaft-like. That's what she said. Uh, so, yeah, Jonathan, here, the, the something, something had to have happened. Um, did you get into a big wreck? Uh... What does it sound like? Does it, does it still sound nice and smooth, Jonathan? Um, there's a there's a it's yeah this, that's that's a that might be a pretty deep troubleshoot because it's not like oh my shit's flipping over. What do I do? Um, message me, uh, Ciadi FPV everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, um, Patreon, I don't know wherever, uh, all over the place. Also, go to CiatiFPV.com, all of you, please. Uh, everything that I'm doing is now on CiatiFPV.com, so you can just go there. It's got all the affiliate shit. It's got links to Fiverr for the... I'm trying to work for you guys. I'm trying to edit videos and, and do... Um, I can help you with your editing. I can teach you to fly better. I can tune your shit. I'm doing tuning on there now, too. Um, so, yeah, do it. Go to CiatiFPV.com, and there'll be a million links, and click them all. It's fun. If you want. If not, eh, do whatever you want. Rick Cepeda says, gonna kick back and relax tonight. Just watch uh, local race this weekend and need to restructure everything so DJI pilots are not stepping on anal analog pilots. I heard uh, I heard uh, Joshua talking about that with you guys. Yeah. Um, the w on um, I flew recently with uh, one of the local pilots, Patrick, and um, he. it was right after he... This was a while ago, actually. It was months ago. Um, he'd just done the 50-whatever megabits per second, I think, DJI mod. Um, <laughs> that He was down as low as he could go, from what I can remember. And I was up on race, uh, race 8, and it was still shitting on me. <laughs> um, I, man, DJI seems to really bleed, just shit all over analog. It's it's uh, it's crazy, man. That that um, that's a shame. I mean, I understand why they did it, but that's kind of aggressive. Um, <laughs> uh, Ken Hale, sorry. Well, I mean, it, maybe they didn't do it on purpose, um, but it doesn't seem like they troubleshot it in any way. You know what I mean? Maybe you can't, um, but. Whatever. Ken Hill uh, says, sorry I missed the stream yesterday. That's okay, Ken. It recorded. You can rewatch it. Uh... Scroll, 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 scroll. B-Man says, what's up? Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep that cool. <laughs> oh, Jesus, B-Man. <laughs> that was not why I was late, for the record. I was late because um, YouTube just randomly changed the stream key that I needed, and it just... And then the the new one wasn't working, and I had to, yeah. YouTube can eat dirt. Uh, Greg Womack, boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. That's why I poop on company time. <laughs> um, I'm with you, Greg. I I have always made it a point to get paid to shit. It's like if I have to fucking work here, they're gonna pay me to poo. So, yeah, <laughs> I poop from nine to five. <laughs> Uh, MSH says link to HD video, uh, doesn't ex well, yeah, here's the, the link to the HD video, it's, uh, it's, it's here, <laughs> it's, it's, here it is, it's right here, there's all the other batteries from that day, <laughs> here's, uh, here's, 
here's my backlog of work for uh, of of flying from uh, from 2020 to give you guys some idea. Here's 2019. 2019 was a good year. Look at all that. None of that's edited yet. There's 2018. Haven't gotten to to any of that either. Is there a 27 yet? There's 2017. <laughs> um, yeah. I gotta get better at uh, at just throwing footage away. I, I've I've gotten a lot better at it actually. Nowadays, like if I come home and and like if if I don't, I won't even look at it. Like I will just dump it immediately if I don't want to. If I'm not like curious about the tune, I, I try to at least watch uh, once so that I can look for problems in the tune. I actually do most of my tuning through HD footage. I just watch all my flights and look for bad behaviors and then go tune them out. Um, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> B-Man FPV says, oh shit, fresh cut. Grumpy FPV says, haircut. Mike Bergman says, god damn, that's a fine ass haircut. The beginning FPV says, oh shit, looking nice. He said shiz, but I like shit better. Mike Bergman says, does anyone have an STL file for an Insta360 go mount for a four ride? Uh, uh, four ride uses the new mounting base. Um, so the four ride uses the same mounting base as the Cineglide and the all of all of Kebab's rigs are using the same mount base now. Um, so all of his new frames. Let me just say that all of his new frames use that same mount base, Mike. Um, so. Yeah, look for those on Thingiverse. Look for, like, Insta360 Go Cinesplore or, um, you know what I mean? Uh, if there still is nothing, uh, get in touch with BMC3D and or Brain3D, and they will probably make one for you. Um, if they don't want to make one for you, tell them that I want... Tell me, and, and I'll message them and try to browbeat them into it. <laughs> uh, because I'll buy one of those, too. Um... Airbender FPV says, holy haircut, uh, YouTube did the thing, so time to scroll back up, uh, alright, let's try to find our place, because, uh, I don't know, <laughs> hey, there we go, maybe it'll do it again, uh, Big Willy FPV says, you doing the FPV crate soon, uh, I am, uh, yeah, every crate is now coming to me, until they tell me otherwise, um, so yeah, the next two FPV crates should be showing up any day now, and I will do a live stream just like last time, we'll unbox it, we'll talk about it, um, I'm trying to keep those short, um, I'm trying to keep those, like, I would love to get them down to, like, less than 10 minutes, um, because that's what YouTube really likes, um, but it's hard, man, you guys ask great questions, and I talk too fucking much, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, those are gonna be quick, uh, whatever the stream excuse me, is after those, uh, we'll dive in and, and talk more in depth, but yeah, the, the FPV crate uh, live streams are supposed to be quick and short and, and, you know, viewable by more than just us maniacs that watch two, three hour videos at a time, so, um, uh, Dauntless H says, no hobo, nice cut, show me your shirt today, this is the official one, um, legitimately from, uh, uh, the UK. Um, I, I, I don't look good enough to take my shirt off live, so I can't show you the label, but you'll just have to believe me. Hey, there's a back to it, too. Uh, 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 there you go. Yeah, that's, like, legitimate. that's, like, from the, the, over in, in the UK, they have, like, Top Gear stores, um, with all the merch and shit, and that's where this came from, um, uh, one of Kristen's old, um, roommates, actually, from college, went over, um, she backpacks all around the world, she's amazing, um, and, uh, yeah, she was over there, and she got me this one, yeah, yeah, she got me this one, and then I went on a, like, three-year journey to try to find the, uh, the official James May shirt that says Captain Slow on it, uh, which I eventually found, and, uh, you guys have probably seen that one as well. Yeah, yeah, you guys have seen that shirt. Uh, Rick Zapata, I hear all the time a 5-inch should be 700 to 750. Who the hell's saying that? Whoever's saying that, that, no. 
Uh, all up weight. My two both weigh 655 with a Hero 5 and a little lighter with my Hero Session. Can 5 inch be too light? Not at all, Rick. Um, th th here's the deal. Building light, you can just put a bigger battery on. Like that, that, that's, that's what just, just, I, I just don't get. Um, there are a lot of frames that have a ton of extra carbon in places that they shouldn't it's a, and like why like there's just no take that carbon out and then if you want that weight back go to a bigger battery and you'll get longer run times too and it, it'll it'll it won't sag as uh, um yeah no such thing as too light um all the footage of mine that you guys have ever watched is with a 610 gram all up weight frame so if if my flying looks okay to you Maybe build a 610 gram all up weight frame. Um, they crash a lot better. They're more efficient. Um, they're much, 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 much more um, lively and like reactive in the air. Um, that's mainly down to the motor weight, the the ends of the, the the weight that you put on the ends of the arms um, is is extremely important. Um, and if you can save like even on a five inch rig. So do this. If if you run those um, if you run those rotor riot skids, right? Uh, next time you go fly, fly half your batteries and then take them off. You will not believe the difference that removing they are two point something, roughly two and a half grams each. Um, you will not believe the difference. The difference is not going to be removing ten grams. It's I. I can barely, barely, barely feel a 10 gram, like net, you know, all up weight difference. Um, the difference will be the second that you move the right stick, um, because less weight on the ends of the arms makes a humongous difference in how quickly you can rotate, you know, that system. Um, and yeah, I don't think we give that, like, for example, right, the Zing 2306s, are hilariously durable and they're purple two big thumbs up um but they're just too heavy like i would love to run them but they're like a gram and a half or two grams heavier than the t-motor f40 pro 2 uh well pro 2s or pro 4s um and that just makes in my opinion the the quad feel like shit i'm very spoiled by flying rigs with 29 gram motors but they make 20 they make I mean, you can get Emacs Ecos for like 12 bucks each, and they, they're 29 grams each. They're not super durable. They don't have tons of power, but do you really need all that power? When I used to have all that power, I would just like be up in the sky waiting to come down all the time. So if you want to be down, you know, in the action where there's like buildings and shit, less power. Although the, the T-Motor F40 Pro 4s make a shitload of power. <laughs> I have those things turned down to 80%, believe it or not. Um, and they're 6S KV. They're, they're 1950 KV. Um, Jonathan King says, uh, new, uh, new Mobula since about week three of International Game of Whoop 2 competition. Lots of batteries, but not a crazy amount. Uh, I've beaten the hell out of the quad, so maybe the motors are screwed up. We'll message you. Uh, Jonathan, do this. Uh, Take uh, take your, well, it's a tiny whoop, so you can do it with the props on. Um, go into beta flight, uh, plug a battery in, go into the motors tab, and spin each motor up individually. Uh, and um, listen, you're you're listening for one of the motors to be super angry, or maybe all of them are super angry. I doubt it though. Um, and then take the props off and do it again. Uh, that's gonna tell you essentially the health of the motors and the and the bushings. Um, you'll know if there's something horribly wrong because it, yeah, they'll, they'll get hot, they'll get noisy, they'll get, that's what she said. Uh, Obese Quad says, interesting fail yesterday. Motor screws on motor one on my Acrobat fell out and motor four died at the same time? Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah, motor screws fell, falling out is a real pain in the ass, especially on micros. Um, just, yeah, get a little, get, um, Get the uh, the Joshua Bardwell famous mercury adhesives uh, 
Loctite with uh, with the brush because the brush actually allows you to get in those tiny little um, in those tiny little motor holes on the uh, on the micro motors without making a, a huge mess because you got to make sure you don't get the Loctite um, near the uh, the motor shaft or it'll get all up yeah it'll just be bad um, so yeah. Uh, that's a um, what, what the motor four died though. That's why did why would motor why? I mean, I guess uh, one drops. Uh, it would send more power to one. Yeah, it's weird that the opposite motor would die. I, I mean, I guess maybe it it just went full bananas when 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 the screws fell out of motor one. The PID loop basically went, what the fuck, right? Because the, <laughs> all of a sudden it doesn't have a motor on the back right corner. Um, and when that happens, I mean, yeah, when the PID net, when, when the PID loop says, oh shit, what the hell's happening? It, it could just like, bah! and just send all the power everywhere and blow everything up. So, um, that sucks, dude. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the game. <laughs> that's what we signed up for. Dauntless H says, I have a flight controller with twitchy gyro and I want to make it into a fixed wing. How do I shut off the gyro, but I want the accelerometer uh, how can I almost kill or fully kill the gyro or its inputs? Uh, I mean, technically, I guess you could just go in there and start... I mean, like, you'll, you'll, on the board, you'll see it. it it'll say Invincense, or Invent, I forget how it's pronounced, but it'll say MPU 6000 or whatever the hell the gyro is. Um, I mean, I feel like you can just, it's got a million little legs around it, just, I guess just fuck with the legs, right? Just, argh, just go in there and, argh, you know, argh, Get your little, uh, get your little, uh, fucking, get your, you know, your little exacto knife and get in there and go, what the fuck is happening? What? Both phones? I got, this is my old phone that blew up, um, when I had to climb that crane to, uh, to recover the rig. And, um, and then the, uh, the the cellular card died, but everything else on the phone works fine, and it's got a huge uh, amount of internal memory. So this is going to be my Insta360 Go uh, hard drive, basically. Um, the the Insta360 Go does not have much onboard storage, so if you if you do like three or four batteries, it'll be filled. Um, it's one of my least favorite things about it because at that point you have to take it out of the mount. You have to put it into their little cradle thing here. Um, thankfully, I'm on iPhones, so I can plug the cradle directly into my iPhone, um, and it'll. I, I set it up to automatically dump to um, the uh, toilet, and uh, yeah. So that's a dump and delete. That that's basically how I have it set up. So I can just plug it in, wait a couple minutes, and it'll dump and it'll delete, and then I can take it out of here and put it back in the mount. Um, but how fucking annoying is that? Like, I, I think there's like a gig of internal memory. Like you, you can't tell me that you guys couldn't squeeze like, like double the memory, right? White man complains. Obese quads. No, <laughs> I already got that one. Rick Zapata volunteered to be a race coordinator this weekend. Oh, my condolences, Rick. Uh, so we'll get you next week on Fiverr for the video editing. I appreciate that, Rick. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's do it. Let's let's do some things. It'll be fun. Patrick Ruan says, "How much did you uh, did you love the HD? If it fits on a tiny whoop one day, I might convert." Um, so Patrick Ruan is asking about uh, how did that happen? Get the hell out of there! You're not. You're not approved to be on the, on the stream, you scumbag bastard. Um, oh, that's what's going on. I gotta get a little bit of Stig helmet in here for you guys. Hey, look, I, uh, I re, uh, I re-thinged. I re-thingsed. Uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> Worst streamer ever. But remember, you know what?
what? Fuck you for life, Clam Man. You goddamn son of a bitch. You, you I, I, I tested it four fucking times before the stream. You fuck. Now he's gonna come on. Now he's gonna come and, and, and shout and shout about not giving up. You prick. Uh, hold on. Um, <laughs> oh boy. Uh, oh, so Patrick Ryan is referring to the fact that um, on Friday, uh, Grayson Hobby, which is a, a local hobby shop, uh, great shop. They have a lot of really good stuff too. If, if you guys haven't checked out Grayson's uh, online shop, definitely do it. Just Google Grayson Hobby, G R A Y S O N. Uh, hobby. Uh, they have stuff that other people don't. They also have certain things really inexpensive, like uh, Fox Ear Toothless. They have like the best deal on Fox Ear. Um, did I say Fox If a second ago? I think I said something weird a second ago. Uh, they have the best deal on Fox Ear Toothless Nanos um, by like $10. Uh, but lots of other good stuff as well. They're also where I bought my very first FPV rig from. Uh, the, my original white OG Baby Hawk from three and a half years ago. I bought from Grayson specifically because they offer um, to set up... If, if you buy a full package from them, rig, batteries, transmitter, whatever, goggles, um, those are the things that we need to fly, right? Uh, if you buy all that shit from them, they will set it up for you for an extra 25 bucks, I think it is. Um, and that's why I went with them, because I, I was scared as shit when, when I was new that I wouldn't be able to figure this shit out. And now look at me. Um, but yeah, I got it from them, and they were super helpful. I had to email Will a bunch of times um, with questions, and he was just like, got right back to me, super chill. And uh, yeah, uh, that Grayson Hobby was also where Quad Camp Atlanta was, the, the very first Quad Camp Atlanta um, which most of you know, because that's how I kind of got my notoriety or whatever, um, with the shenanigans that went on after hours there. And, uh, so yeah, they, uh, Basil from over there reached out and he said, Hey, let's, uh, let's, let's work together. And I love that idea because, uh, yeah, those guys have just always been running an awesome shop over there. So I went up there, uh, they got sent a, uh, 95. This is the, the top plate for an 85. This is not what's left of the of the quad that I flew there. <laughs> that would be fucking great. I should oh, I should lie more to you guys, and I should have told you that. Um, but yeah, the uh, Beta FPV sent them a 95x V2 for testing, and um, they invited me out to fly it, give them um, you know, and and do their review video with them. Um, so that'll be coming this week. I think they said Friday of this week they'll have that um, up over on their channel. Um, also, Grayson Hobby has a great YouTube channel. They review um, lots of micros, and they're cool dudes, Will and, Bas uh, Will and Basil. Um, so yeah, check them out, Grayson Hobby. Uh, it was HD. Um, so I got to use DJI for a second time. And, um, you know... <laughs> I So, take off, fly around. I'm flying for like like a minute and a half and somebody goes oh how do you um this is only your second time using hd right and i was like oh right oh right <laughs> like like i just didn't um i i was just flying uh and that's a i know that sounds a little weird but that's a really good thing um for just like the way so back in race car days um when i would when i would put uh, when I would change the camber and up front or in the rear or change tire pressures um, between runs or, um, you know, change the dampers a little bit, um, if, if I didn't notice the change, um, it was either I didn't make enough of a change or more often than not, it was that the change made the, the car handle properly and by my not noticing it like that 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 that's kind of the highest praise ever um i, I went to university way back when for uh tv radio and did a lot of editing and one of the things we would talk about is that like as an editor if if you're if all of your work 
disappears and becomes completely seamless, that's the biggest compliment you can possibly get, right? And it's like the most insane thing, right? Because it's like, oh, great, I did such a good job that nobody noticed my whole life. Um, kind of the same thing, right? Like, um, if it's right, it's right. And, and you can just focus on, on what you're doing. Um, in this particular case, my focus was more on the radio that I was using. I was using a, a, a jumper T16 um, that was Will's and Will is a, a, he flies thumbs and he told me afterwards, cause I was having a real hard time flying this thing on this transmitter. He told me afterwards that like, he's done all this weird stuff to make that his transmitter better for thumbs. Um, he said like the, the, the stick ends were like canted forward and like, I don't know, it was crazy. Um, after we were done with everything, I was, I was just super curious. I bound it up to my transmitter and I went out front and flew it in the dark and all of a sudden it felt way better. Um, still some issues with that rig, uh, but yeah, it, it um, so that's that there, there you go. There's some, uh, insider baseball on my Friday night at Grayson Hobby. <laughs> Uh, Tyler Harris says nice haircut, LOL. Thank you, Tyler. I I wish you just said nice haircut. You know, I wish you didn't have to put that laugh out loud in there. Because now I'm very self-conscious. What are you laughing at? Are you laughing at my haircut? Are you laughing at my face? That's what you should be laughing at. Uh, License Drive says C. Oh, I did it again. Um... Seen the upcoming Insta360 camera footage. Ugh, gross. Annoyingly, it doesn't look like a Go replacement, and it's possibly 25 frames per second too, but does look like a 360 degree camera. Oh, so they're making an Insta... So I guess they're making an actual Insta360 Go? <laughs> right? Because it's 360. Put your fucking head down. Whenever I tell, when what you you the, you guys can call it. If 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 a joke bombs, you guys can call it. Just say put your fucking head down. Tweet FPV is here. What's up, brother? Um, uh, Rain Dog's data log says, have you considered making a Cinnabird? Looks like a nice frame. Um, uh, the, the the my big problem with building that rig is it's like a thousand dollar build because you gotta buy the, the goddamn 360 camera. Um, and I really kinda have no interest in, in 360 cameras. Like, I, I think they're super cool, and I think um, Zorro, for example, with a 360 camera. That, my friends, is a fucking match made in heaven. Um, I don't think I would do a 360 camera justice. Um, I, I think I would just smash the ever-loving piss out of it in like three batteries and that would be that. Um, so yeah, no real interest in, in that Cinebird frame, unfortunately, but um, I, I think it's a real, I mean, if, if you have the budget for it, I think a lot of you guys would really have a blast with that. Um, that that 360-ness is, uh, is just so cool. <laughs> Uh, Bill Grimes has had the name Rip Squeak in his head all day. Thanks, Seattle FPV. You're welcome, Bill. Um, I swear to God, someday they'll be back in stock. Um, I, 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 I sent a round of messages to Bill over at BQE again today. Um, I haven't heard from him. I also reached out to Bot, um, and he hasn't heard from him either. So uh, hopefully everything's okay. I'm sure it is. Uh, but, yeah, um, so help me God, if I've now found another favorite three-inch frame that becomes out of stock forever, I'm going to be fucking pissed. Because <laughs> this will be the third time that... We're not going to get it. Let's, let's, let's not <laughs> let this devolve into me screaming about... I don't know, dude. Am I that impossible to work with? Like, what is is this? Like, is it me? Is it me? Toxic FPV says thanks a million for the neck strap for my radio. You're certainly welcome. It has been a lifesaver. Already had to replace the arm switch. 
uh, before I got the next trip. <laughs> to <laughs> toxic. What? So you were like straight up just not using an X-Strap, dropping your radio, breaking switches? Get it, use like a, a fucking, I don't know. Use uh, use some string. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, toxic. What are we going to do with you? Greg Womack says, what are some durable two and a half inch and three inch props defeats the purpose of being light if I can't get it to fly back? Uh, Greg Womack, Womack, I got you covered on two and a half inch. Uh, the Emax Rush three blade two and a half inch prop is hysterically durable. Um, it is, it's also my favorite. It, it, the performance is great too. Um, they're a little heavy, but between the performance being good and them being durable, um, I don't fly any other two and a half inch props. Uh, three inch? Ugh. Um, I mean, I guess the, the HQ three by three by threes, the old ass ones, I guess those are the, uh, most durable three inch props, but they're still not all that durable. Um, they're kind of really, there just sort of isn't right now. Um, one of the things that um, is on, is within the the sponsorship deal uh, between Gemfan and myself that is not quite finished yet, but it's looking like, it's looking pretty good, um, last I heard. Uh, something in there is a signature prop, and hopefully that's not just me putting my name on something that already exists. Hopefully it's a new three inch prop that is durable um, and is a lower pitch. Uh, I'm, I think like 30, 35 maybe, maybe 30, 30, maybe 30, 25, I don't know. Uh, we'll see, That that's like probably way in the future or maybe not, I don't know. But um, if I get the opportunity to do a prop with Gemfan, that's not an already existing prop, it will be a durable three inch prop. Um, basically all I would really want is the, is the wind dancer, the 3028 wind dancer, um, with blades that are not as wide, right? N more narrow blades. And that'll bring the weight down considerably. And it also, um, it seems to make props more efficient. Um, but then use some of that, uh, use some of that weight in the thickness of the blade itself so that it can then become durable. Um, so it won't be the lightest weight prop, but we need a durable three inch prop because it's true. <laughs> Having a lightweight rig with really fragile props, it doesn't make it any more durable. It might as well be a fat little shit, right? It might as well be a uh, an obese micro. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Edge Ted, Play that video. I tagged you in on my story. Uh, also, what motors are you putting on the rip squeak? And did you figure out the standoff situation? What's the standoff situation, Edge? Um, and that that video is G. Oh yeah, 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 it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here you guys go. <laughs> oh, you can't get the. Wait, can you? Can you get the stories from desktop? Oh, you can. You can. Hey, there it is. <laughs> there we are. Here you guys go. It, the thing wasn't on. Score. Uh, RCX 1306, either 6,000 kV or 4,000 kV. I haven't quite decided yet. Uh, but yeah, RCX 1306 is for sure, mainly because uh, the current Rip Squeak arms are 9x9 only. Um, all my other favorite 3-inch prop motors are 12x12. Uh, but these are great. These RCX 13, 1306s are great. They're not as great as the Brother Hobby 1504 and a halfs, but 
What am I gonna do? Um, I really want to build this flame frame. Uh, B-Man says, where's the best place to mount crossfire antennas on a rig closer to the camera or the VTX? Doesn't make a difference. Uh, to keep in interference to the OSD down. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference, uh, B-Man. Uh, uh, um, I think the interference comes from the receiver itself being too close to the VTX. Um, but I literally... V VHB my Crossfire Nanos directly to the top of the of of my uh, tramp of of the tramp uh, immersion RC VTXs that I use, and I've never had an issue. So, uh, the deal with mounting Crossfire antennas is you just you got the big thing is just to get them as far the fuck away from the carbon as you possibly can. Um, yeah, so. I, I, I've just not had that interference issue to to be able to help with, but um, VTX is sending, and that's yeah. I, I just is I is that problem still a thing, guys? Like, is uh, I, I thought that was like a like a one off problem that like one person was having way back when. Um, is anybody else having that having that issue? What's uh, what's the collective have to say about that? Uh, Rob Axelson is here. T-Bird FPV is also here. He's talking a tweet uh, and saying that he owes me some TPU. Take your time, T-Bird. Uh, fuck you for life, clam man. <laughs> Until Squancho says, Rain Dog's data log says legit. Uh, would be happy to pay you 50 bucks for a juicy edit. How much raw slash B-roll footage is enough uh, or too much, though? Uh, Rain Dog's, the, the $50, I think that's the first of the three that I put in Fiverr. Um, it should, it should talk about that um 50 bucks is is pretty kind of straightforward it's 50 bucks is mainly going to get you in the right format for youtube so that when i kick it out and it's done it's 4k so that you get good um bit rate from them uh you know lead in fade out and then just watching it i mean you know 50 bucks is an hour so just like think about that think of what you'd be able to get done in an hour for an edit um it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty basic to to give you guys some idea that like my edits on my channel that like my big edits that I put up what once a month, if that, um, most of those have at least ten hours, um, quite a few have twenty or thirty or forty hours. Just again to kind of get you guys in the ballpark, um, I didn't I, I I assumed that nobody would be willing to spend a thousand dollars. On editing from a guy that's not an editor, right? Like that. That's like I edit a lot of flight edits, but I I barely know Premiere. I mean, I I know enough to make all the edits that I've made so far, so I know a little bit. But yeah, um, so yeah, um, uh, I would say like uh, I don't know, two or three batteries. Yeah, two or three batteries because. Let's say three batteries, that's going to take me roughly 15 minutes to watch, to even just watch, to figure out what's good and what's not. Um, and then I've got to go back through it and chop it up. That's going to take another half hour, and then that leaves another 15, you know, and change uh, for formatting it properly, waiting for the computer to do its thing, um, all the other shit. So, um, but yeah, we'll talk. Rain Dogs, if, if, uh, if you're interested, we'll talk. And the, the, the first bunch of these that I do... Like I'm gonna spend way more time than than I should, um, just to get, you know, a little bit of a more solid portfolio in front of me. But um, I'm yeah, I'm not gonna put ten hours in. <laughs> like, you know, I'll put like an hour and a half in instead of an hour or two hours. But um, yeah, uh, <laughs> Tortoise Fuga correctly says he only said don't give up. Starting is a whole different matter. It's very true, very very true. Squitchy FPV says tell me about how tuning is going to work on Fiverr. Squitchy, I have no idea. Um, the the gig that I put up on Fiverr for tuning is an in-person gig. Uh, someone on yesterday's stream mentioned wanting to do tuning virtually, digitally, remotely. Remotely, that's it. Um, and, I mean, Skype call where you can screen share... And then hopefully some ability to like hover the rig, right? Like if it was me, if, if, if I was the one going to 
someone else for tuning help, I would like before the the Skype call, I would like get like an area ready, right, where I can like hover the rig or, or something, right? Um, I I I leave that up to to the person on the other side. Uh, yeah, as long as I can see and hear what it's doing wrong, um, and then see beta flight. Kind of good. That's that's kind of all I need. It's it's not gonna be easy. <laughs> like I, I I have a feeling uh, that Fiverr gig is probably gonna be the first one to go, but I'll give it a shot, right? Maybe maybe it goes well. Maybe it's it's great. Um, only one way to find out. Cement Kid says good evening, Mister CID FPV and chat. What's up, Cement? Uh, T Bird FPV says that's where I got my first rig. Also nice. Um, T-Bird is local. Uh, the, I, the, for me, I was all the way up in New Jersey, so it wasn't even like a local shop, but T-Bird probably got it from there because it, it was local. Um, Guillermo's here. What's up, brother? Tweet FPV bought his... Wow, all you guys bought your first rigs from... Did everybody buy... Was, was it the same? Did you all have them do the setup for you? Is that... Like, is it just all of us? Are we all the smartest people in the world? Uh, you could, YouTube did the thing... Fucker. Uh, 661 FPV says, have you heard of BQE.io? Uh, I might have. I I maybe heard of them. <laughs> That's where I bought this rig from. Um, BQE has been on my radar for a long time, mainly because I grew up in New Jersey. Um, and BQE stands for Brooklyn Queens Expressway. Um, so yeah, BQE has been on my radar for a long time. Uh, I never bought any of their frames because they were always very heavy. And, and I've always been a light... Uh, f rig kind of guy, uh, but this Rip Squeak Micro over here, this is man, it, it checks all the boxes. It is plenty light. Uh, it looks really strong. It feels really strong. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be a good one. Um, just everybody do this. That, that they come back in stock. Um, I will keep bugging the shit out of Bill uh, from BQE until he <laughs> orders more or discontinues it and says, fuck you, you bothered me too much. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I just, maybe it's my fault. I'm bugging these guys too much when they go out of stock and then they just say, you know what? It's not worth it. I hate this hobby. No frames for any of you. B-Man FPD says, yo, we're... Okay. <laughs> that was a while ago. Um... Private Island FPV put his Insta360 Go in the air for the first time last night. Uh, it was getting pretty dark. I think my FPV video <laughs> is better than the Go. Uh, was it the fact that it was too dark? It's really grainy. Yeah, Private Island. Um, <clears throat> the the it, it doesn't deal with low light um, at all. Uh, so, yeah, totally. Uh, <clears throat> but, like, the, the, the sunset time on your phone in, in weather, if you're on an iPhone, um, that's going to be like the cutoff pretty much for the Insta360 Go. Um, any, any, so after sunset, well, so you have like golden hour, which kind of leads into and bleeds into, to, um, uh, sunset. And then you have like an hour or an hour and a half of blue hour. Um, and GoPros are fine in blue hour. But the Insta360 Go is not. Uh, once you get into blue hour, once the sun is down beyond the horizon and you can't look right at the sun anymore, um, put the Insta360 Go away. It's just going to look like a bag of shit. Rick Zepeda, uh, is whose question I just answered. Wait, no, it's not. Uh, Rick Zepeda, also with an Insta360 Go question. What? He got one for 80 bucks. What? Um, Emacs Tiny, will an Emacs Tiny Hawk carry it? Ooh, I doubt it, Rick. Uh, they really shit the bed with the motor selection on that rig. Um, I, if it does carry it, it's going to carry it like a Tiny Whoop, um, which is not the end of the world, uh, but, yeah. Well, it will carry it. It will carry. You know, they built that rig with the with the two and a half inch props, and because of the, they may have picked the wrong motors, but 
those two and a half inch props are actually going to carry that thing. Yeah. That's funny. Um, I wish the Insta360 Go was out back when I did that review because um, I was struggling for positive things to say about it. And that would have been a positive thing. Um, the, the two and a half inch props, even though those motors are mismatched to those props, um, it's actually a better situation for carrying a load. <laughs> oh, why am I a fucking re just eight year old? Uh, old gravy leg, thank you. Uh, Greg Womack says, "What would be a good What would be good camera settings for a Cadex Turtle V1 running on my Acrobrat V1 with 1507 Zing motors?" Um, I'm confused, Greg. Uh, like, what do you What do you What are you getting at? Um, what would be good camera settings? I like what. So when my initial reaction is that you want me to like basically as like when when every pro pilot other than me puts up a video that says oh, my GoPro settings, hey, um, and then they just go through the the options menu on the GoPro and is that that's where my brain goes? Is that what you're asking, Greg? Or um, yeah, tag me again. Remind me of what's going on. Maybe even just copy and paste this, um, and uh, we'll get it figured out. T Bird says that's what she said. Uh, Rob Axelson says uh, the three. The, see, I thought so too. Rob Axelson says the three sixty view gets old fast. That's kind of what I thought too. Like, like, just like a, a kind of a novelty thing. Um, that being said, I I think that it it can if you force yourself to keep going at it. I think you can do some really crazy shit with it. You know what? What really intrigues me about it is that nobody's really gone crazy with it. Like everybody has that I've seen got it, used it for two weeks, and then I never saw it again. Um, so I'll bet you, if like, if it if if you wanted a thing, right? Like one of the things that I mentioned to you guys a lot is like. If you want to kind of make a name for yourself, what the fuck, whatever, uh, uh, you, you know, you look for like a thing. You got to have like a thing, right? My thing was the micro, was 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 micro brushless rigs and and whatever. Um, yeah, just so that you're not, just so that you're uh, swimming in a bit of a smaller pond, right? Um, I would love to see that. I would love to see someone like fall in love with an Insta three hundred and sixty or uh, the GoPro Max, uh, and just do 50 edits with it. Um, because if you did 50 edits with that, with that 360 th um, setup, I'm sure that you would, you would f discover all kinds of wacky little crazy things to do. But um, one of you, <laughs> if one of you does that, I'll play the shit out of those videos. How about that? Um, License to Drive says, new ins- Hey! Good looking out, sir. Here we go. I'm gonna give you guys the audio, too. No shit. Okay, so he's got it on a string there. Maybe it's waterproof from that? So he's just got it on a string. That's pretty cool. That, this is a hell... This is, uh... Legit, though. While rolling? Alright. Huh. All right. Um, I I don't think it'll be an FPV camera, but uh, 
Who knows? That's that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm uh, I am uh, I wish I hadn't seen that that flight through the moving car because that's all I'm gonna be able to think about. <laughs> and now I want to do that through a drift car. <laughs> Rick Zapata's got a two-inch BQE pickpocket and loves it. It's one of his best and favorite micros to fly. Um, Rick, what do you like about it? That it's real durable? Because it probably is, because that's kind of BQE's thing. Um, uh, Rob Axelson says, Rob Axelson says, do the 3016 in your special colors. Yeah, so if, 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 um, if it's like, We'll do a we'll do purple because they they know it's going to be purple. It's probably going to be the the purple of the uh, uh, fifty one forty threes. Uh, so it'll just be that purple. And yeah, if if they say to me like it's got to be a prop that we already have, it, it'll be the thirty sixteen. I think. Um, I don't think it'll. Thirty twenty eight is really good, but god damn, they're so fragile. The thirty six they're they're no they're no stronger than the thirty sixteen. Um, but they do make an ass load more thrust. Um, that'll be one of those two. Uh, R Stang 5 0 is having trouble with his glide build. I'm going to fix it. Using 15 millimeter standoffs. Now I'm super interested. But the camera hits the 20 by 20 flight controller. Any suggestions? Which camera, R Stang? Um, basically, uh, and. This is going to be the, 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 you just need to get different, uh, TPU mounting loop jib jabs. Um, uh, also though, I run smaller, like when I buy a 20 by 20 flight controller, I make sure that it's not like huge. Some of the 20 by 20 flight controllers are like, like they have the mounting holes and then there there's like 16 feet of fucking PCB outside those holes. It's just like, guys, what? Uh, so, yeah, you don't want a flight controller like that, for sure. I buy flight... Con well, yeah, I, I run mine on uh, Talons, which are, you know, if you see the... If you can see the outside of the mounting holes, there's only a tiny little bit of material outside of there. So, it's, you know, this board is like 22 by 22. Um... So, but yeah, other than that, you just need to get different, uh, shorter front standoff, um, uh, TPU loops. I use, uh, I buy these from Pyrodrone. God damn it. There it is. I buy these from Pyrodrone, uh, message me and I'll, and I'll send you the link to them. But uh, you can also just print them. There's like a million of them on Thingiverse. Uh, but yeah, you just want ones that are uh, that have the screw holes as far forward as possible, right? And I'm trying to give you a view of what my clearance is like on mine. Uh, let me do this real quick. I'm gonna get this camera zoomed in. There we go. Okay. So, let's see what I can do here. So this is the rig with the uh, Foxier Toothless, which I actually don't like. I like the um, I like the Runcam Nano Phoenix better, but there you go. I mean, it's tight. It's it's for sure tight in there. There it is. There's the 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 angle I was looking for. So you can kind of see. I do have a little gap in the bottom there. All right. Uh... I mean, I guess there could be some weird, like, electricity witchcraft going on, but probably fine i would just do it <laughs> ken hill copied uh 
the communications package uh, works good. No broken UFLs yet. Nice, Ken. Uh, I'm assuming that you're talking about VTX, uh, Nano, Shrink Wrap. Mike Bergman wishes he could buy a Rip Squeak. Mike, I wish I could buy a second Rip Squeak. <laughs> so I'm right there with you. Ken Hill, I already covered that. YouTube did the thing. Ooh, ooh, I'm close to the bottom, though. Uh, Grumpy FPV says, I've asked Akaso to send me that camera to try out. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, let us know, Grumpy, for sure. Uh, there's a there's a, a potential uh, cheaper Insta360 Go, basically, uh, coming out. Greg Womack says... Okay, we talked about that one. Uh, Rabox says, put your fucking head down. Uh, Greg Womack... Just don't want vibration in video. Colors in the eye, uh, I guess smooth video with old gear. Okay, so I, all right, I, I had a feeling you, it, there might be something like that going on, Greg. Uh, so, camera, all right, so I'm trying to think of what the turtle allows you to adjust. Um, I think the turtle allows you to set the ISO. Set the ISO as low as it'll go. Uh, 100 is great. 200 is great. 400, eh, it's fine. Um, but yeah, set the ISO as low as it'll go. Uh, set your... No, it doesn't let you adjust that. The turtle doesn't give you much adjustment. Um, you're, you're pretty much going to have to... If you're getting jello... Um, I think you're on, uh, you're on the Patreon, um, Greg, uh, I've got, click Tech Talk at the top of the Patreon page, and, uh, there's a couple posts in there, uh, dealing with motor heat, how to deal with motor heat, uh, it's the same, it's the same troubleshoot, it's the same step-by-step -step process, so hit that post, um, and just start working through it, and some of the stuff is basic, but check it, um, I can't tell you how many times I've chased... A jello problem around because I knew what it had to be and there was a fucking motor screw that had you know there was a motor that was loose or there was an arm that was delaminated or any number of other stupid ass things um you just you have like every time you're having a problem you have to like have the discipline to go through the full checklist and not just oh I know what it is I'll just fix it with the pids like worst thing you can possibly do um, fix the, yeah, always try to fix the mechanical system first. Uh, oh, he's been fucking with me. He's, he's sitting on the, on my light and he's just. Huh. Fuck. Um, Rab Axison loves the baby rat tail. And it's Big Brother, the regular red tail. Uh, Rstang50 says, nano camera with short mounts. Uh, you've got those mounts. Okay, which uh, um, which uh, flight controller you got? Your flight controller must be too big. If, if you've got that same camera, then, I mean, that's the only thing that makes any sense, is the flight controller is bigger than mine. Um, that sucks, dude. That's so annoying because I don't think... I I think you're gonna struggle to find mounts that are closer that are farther forward. Um, definitely try that first though, because swapping out to a smaller flight controller is like way 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 much more of a pain in the ass. So, um, yeah, it's kind of annoying, but uh, I don't know what else to say. B man, uh, why are you why do you run your rig so tight? Uh, I use the taller standoff. Wait. I use the taller standoffs. I like room. Is there an advantage to that? Uh, the biggest thing, B-Man, for me in terms of going to lower and lower and lower standoffs is for strength. Um, like, so when I went from 20 millimeter to 15 millimeter standoffs, for example, I gained 25% more strength just by the fact that I made the lever 25% shorter, right? Um, that's a big deal. Like when, when on a school bus style frame, um, like the glide, like the alien, like, you know, many frames without the cages in the front, I said without the cages in the front, um, 
that's a really big deal. Bending the standoffs and or bending the hardware and or breaking the base plate or the top plate where those where that hardware sits um, is a really big deal. The, the secondary benefits are center of gravity gets lower because the prop line gets higher. So the, the center of gravity becomes more balanced uh, up in, 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 the, in the up and down direction. Um, and also it's lighter. Um, you're shaving probably five, six grams. Um, so that's why I, I personally do it. Uh, reasons for going with longer standoffs. Uh, there, I, I, there's only really one for me, in my opinion, and it is to uh, moving the GoPro up, right? So with longer standoffs, you're literally going to move the GoPro up. You're going to move the lens of the GoPro up. So when this thing does a roll, the lens of the GoPro is going to be in a different spot. It's going to be higher. So when the, when the rig does a roll, it's going to look different. I don't know if it's going to look better. I don't know if it's going to work, look worse. I, I don't know if there is an answer to that because it's all personal preference at that point, right? But it's going to look different. So in my opinion, the only reason... <laughs> Uh, to not run the shortest possible standoffs that you can um, is that for some re if, if for some reason you like the way it looks better when the GoPro lens is higher when your rig does rolls. And it's only rolls, right? Flips don't make a difference. Yaw doesn't make a difference. It's literally only on rolls. So I guess if you do a lot of snap rolls and there's a very specific way that you like them to look, um, or if you just don't want to fucking pinch your fingers and, and just have a nightmare to deal with because <laughs> it sounds like that's why um <laughs> it sounds like the, oh oh okay uh it sounds like that's why b-man is doing it um that is the other thing that's true i i think uh uh i just saw out of the corner of my eye somebody typed it somewhere in the chat um it does get the props out of view of the gopro a little bit a little tiny bit um it makes very 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 little difference um in terms of props and view uh, uh yeah I, I i don't really consider that to be a reason because it makes so slight of a difference like it's it's really almost nothing um but yeah for me the benefits of shorter standoffs far outweigh uh the um yeah, having a little bit more prop and view. That that you know that rig on a thirty degree. Well, so here's the thing with a glide with, with a glide frame on a thirty degree um, mount, which is kind of like the standard. You kind of really don't have much prop and view anyway. So, um, uh, great question though, B man. Uh, Chris Ferret says, "Is that a three D printed condom cover over your flight control USB plug?" It is, Chris Ferret, and they are available over on my Etsy store. Go to CiatiFPV.com for a link. Ugh, what have I become? What have I become? Airbender FPV with a twenty dollars super chat. Thank you, brother. Um, I got a Meteor sixty five a few days ago, and the camera is out of focus. <laughs> Uh, why? How, 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 if you make cameras, you've got one job, one, one fucking job, you fuck it up, you send it out out of focus. Uh, I tried to pick the glue off and refocus it, but, uh, they put so much glue on, uh, uh, when I tried to turn, turn it, the metal ring turned, not the thread apart. Yeah, it, um, it, it's, it's hopeless, dude. Uh, I, I, I've been there. It sucks so bad, man. Uh, but way back when, um, when I was flying only micros, uh, I was, uh, flying a lot of those little AIO cameras, the camera with the VTX on the back, um, all in one little jib jab. And, um, it was the same shit. They, they would come out of focus all the time. And, um, what I would do is I would take a, uh, this is the only thing that ever worked. I would take my trusty, ah, Leatherman Wave, 
Um, because it has this blade on it. And this blade, in these little uh, uh, valleys, the little U-shaped bastards, um, they just happen to fit, like, perfectly on the on the threads of those little tiny AAO cameras. Um, so basically what I would do is put this on one side and then my thumb on the other and I would just spin the, uh, you know, use my thumb to push on the, on the lens of the camera and I would just spin the whole camera in here. And, um, and every once in a while I would give like a little, you know, like, like to, to kind of like pop the, that glue and shit out. Um, it didn't always work though. Sometimes I'd fuck it up. Uh, but yeah, if you have a blade like that with with a little pocket where you can kind of cradle it in there and then just you know spin it, spin it, spin it, it's gonna drop. The blade's gonna drop into the threads and it's gonna kind of run itself around. Then you can just. But um, uh, it sucks, dude. Uh, I yeah, I mean, it sounds like you already fucked it up, so of course you can't return it. But um, or maybe you can. Maybe get in touch with whoever bought it from and say, hey, I tried to refocus this, but the, they put too much glue on it. Um, let me send it back to you because it's useless. <laughs> um, uh, that sucks, dude. Yeah, that's super annoying. Rob Axison says, uh, you can move the camera out in front of the frame. That's true. There's no protection, uh, but it will give you room. Yeah, that's not something that I'm ever going <laughs> to really talk about because, whoo, that is scary as shit putting it out there. It'll absolutely work. Uh, and you'll have the best FPV feed you've ever seen, but, uh, yeah, put anything down the middle, and it is going to be game over. Rstang50 says, 20 by 20 Mamba F4. Mamba F4. I didn't think that was a very big flight controller. Uh, how about this? Rstang, uh, shoot me a message, Ciotti FPV on uh, Facebook, Instagram, wherever, and um, take a couple pictures Show me where it's hitting. Show me how it's hitting. Uh, maybe even a little video. And uh, although, I mean, it's not going to be much of a troubleshoot. It's going to be me telling you you need to mount it farther forward. So um, I, I, there's nothing, like, magical that I do other than, um, like I already said, running running a 20 by 20 flight controller that's as, you know, I, I don't want to say as small as possible, but... It's small as possible. Athix <laughs> uh, um, dropped his Insta360 Go and scratched the lens. Tried to buff it out and completely distorted the image. Oh, God. Luckily, I have that sweet Best Buy insurance, and I got a new one for $5.30. <laughs> Serrations, that's the word. Thanks, Rain Dogs. Uh, that's dope, Athix. That's, that's good to know that it's, uh, um, it only costs $5 to do the, uh, I'm gonna start being mean to my Insta360. As soon as I get one from Best Buy, uh, this one I got from Amazon with their Asurion, and that's a mail-in, uh, thing. So, I'll break this one and then mail it into them, and then the, when I buy a replacement or whatever, uh, I'm getting it from Best Buy now that they're in stock. They are in stock at Best Buy, um, for the record, guys. Uh, Toxic FPV is going to be ordering the DJI through Amazon soon. We'll use your link to share the love. Thank you, Toxic FPV. Toxic FPV with the beautiful segue. My website has the affiliate links that you need on it. It's got one for Amazon, one for Get FPV, one for FPV Crate, Banggood, and even one for Camera Butter. Um, so yeah, if you're doing an order on any one of these stores, if you don't mind, right before you do that order, just come on in here and, uh, let's say you're doing an Amazon order. It's going to take you to a wacky product. You don't have to buy that product. You click the link. You did your job. When you click that link, it put a little cookie in your uh, browser with my info. See, look at this. Ready? Look at that shit. Look, it says my fucking name. Look at it. Um, that's not actually the, maybe it is, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it puts a little cookie and then I get, uh, I get cookies. They send me cookies, actually. That's, uh, that's the way it happens. That's the way it works. Uh, Oreos, to be exact. So, uh, yeah, I, I like cookies. Um, so I really want you guys to do that. So please, I need cookies. 
look how, look at this. Look. I'm obviously not getting enough cookies. Uh, thank you, Toxic FPV. You're the fucking man. Dauntless H is, uh, he just finished replacing the flight controller on his reframed DIY Baby Hawk. No shit, Dauntless. Uh, put a picture of that in, uh, in the Discord or somewhere. Uh, I have to see it. I have to see it. And, I'll, and I'm sure I'll end up uh, re... McGiblitzing, whatever the fuck it's called. What is it? Reshare? Shit, shit, re... Shit, fuck, whatever. Fucking social media words can eat my ass. Uh, with a spoon, nonetheless. Athix FPV says they prorate the insurance plan depending on how long you've... That's right. I have the two-year $50 plan. Right, 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 right. Yada, yada, yada. It's as small as possible. That's what she said. <laughs> Um, Rick Zapata uh, put a space in between Ciotti and FPV, but he's a moderator and he's in blue, so I saw it. BQE is extremely durable and is set up with Pyrodrone F4 AIO, uh, 1104, 7500 KV motors, uh, and it's a little ripper. That's a, that's a, a super cool combo, Rick. I'm digging that. Uh, and then I'm, I'm going to read Airbender's thing, and then I'm going to be on the chat. Um, fly, flying Ram, don't ship those. <laughs> don't. Don't. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, Airbender says, Do you have a better camera for the Meteor 65? I have a 3D printer, so I can make any mount I need. Um, Meteor 65 uses beta FPVs, VTX camera, all in one little thing. Um, I, do, I don't... It's interesting you asked me that. I, I, you just made me realize that, like, I have a bunch of tiny whoops that are up right now, and they all have different cameras in them, and I didn't even notice. Like, I didn't... They, they all three of them have drastically different uh, little board cameras in, and, and they definitely look different, but I just... It, that it just hasn't crossed my mind. I, I've just been flying. Um, I will pay more attention to when I'm um, to which of these uh, cameras is the best. I mean, none of them are bad because I haven't like I haven't had a moment where I'm like, oh, this fucking camera sucks. Um, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll get back to you. Um, oh right, they put the uh, right, 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 Airbender. They put the. Um, the the meteor is their light one uh, where they put the VTX on the board. Um, I think I forget. Whatever, it doesn't matter. B man uh, says, you know anything about bots? Twenty two oh seven, eighteen fifty. I don't. I don't know anything about any twenty two oh sevens. I I'm completely. Well, I know about the BBB ones because those are my first motor, but um, I, I just don't pay any attention to twenty two oh seven or twenty two oh eight. I I just I I really. Um, the, the 23 millimeter wide stator is so much better in my opinion. And, and with my setup and all my rigs that, um, yeah, I, I just have no, I just have no interest in 22. And it sounds terrible, but I just have no interest in 2207s. Um, they're probably really durable though. Probably. Um, if I'm running a 45 amp ESC and they say the motor's burst at 50 amps is that underpowered and risk of fire you the um you can't really you, you can't really put like an amp rating on a motor because it's it depends on everything um what i can tell you though is a 45 amp esc is enough for pretty much anything i fly 30 amp escs um uh, Ryan Harrell flies 25 amp ESCs and they're completely fine. Uh, going like beyond 30 amps, all that really does is give you a little bit more headroom for like really nasty crashes. On a on a really nasty wreck, um, there'll be like a backflow of current some magical way, and uh, it can blow the ESC up. So having um, none of our batteries can. Um, can put enough uh, amperage voltage out to blow up one of these 55 amp ESCs. So, the, it, 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 yeah, um, you'll be totally fine, is, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, Rick Zapata says, I'll post some pictures uh, of the BQE on Discord tonight. Awesome. B-Man says, what's the advantage of 23S over 22S? 
Uh, it's one more S. Uh, and then Aethex FPV says, do you have your profile active on the Insta360 app? Just found Zorro on the Insta360 social media thing. You know, I don't. I didn't even know that was a thing on there. Um, I will go looking for that, though, because I did just see that one of uh, Zorro's clips got picked up. And I'm going to have some pretty wicked Insta360 uh, Go shit coming up soon. Um, some of you might have seen Those of you eagle-eyed viewers that are following me on Instagram looking at my stories might have seen one of them from last night at like 4 a.m. <laughs> when I couldn't sleep. And uh, B-Man, I'm assuming that you were asking uh, what's the advantage of 3S over 2S. Um, realistically, 3S is going to be a little more efficient. Unless you're wanting to run like a 2S 300 mAh battery because they don't make batteries less than 300 mAh. If you then went up from 2S to 3S, you would gain a shitload of weight. Usually, when you go from 1S to 2S, or 2S to 3S, or 4S to 6S, um, oh, he means the stator. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, what's the advantage uh, to a 23mm wide stator versus a 22mm wide stator? Um, basically, the wider the stator the longer the lever, right? The the stator and the magnets interact to, to, you know, like you can think of each stator pole kind of going like, eh, eh. And, and, if you, and, and if the stator pole's real little and it's going, eh, 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 right? It doesn't have a lot of mechanical torque. It's just got a little, eh, 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 eh. Um, whereas if you make the lever longer, it can go, oh, oh. Because it's a it's a big long lever, right? It's it's think of um, you know breaking a, a you, you let a tire shop do your tires and they fucking gun the uh, they don't have the clutch set on their fucking guns those assholes so they just ha and they and they just hammer the fucking lug nuts on and then when you get a flat tire on the side of the road the the shitty little fucking um, uh, lug wrench in the back of your car it, it's not a long enough lever. Well, that's a twenty two oh seven in my opinion. Um, the lever is not long enough. You can't get enough mechanical torque to get the job done. Your, you know, your X number of pounds, you put that lever perfectly flat and you go all the way on the end of it and you start bouncing up and down. It's all you can do on the side of the road. You don't have a breaker bar on the side of the road. Um, 2306 motor, it's, it's got that breaker bar on it. And what that breaker bar is really going to help out with, and the, the big advantage for me is that when the when the pid loop really needs to slow down the propeller, it's really hard. Um, there is a lot of momentum going, and when it wants to slow that momentum down to make less thrust, and and the also keep in mind the pid loop runs at minimum of four k, right? It's four thousand times a second that that it's making a, a judgment, and if some of those judgments are, oh, fuck, slow the prop down, um, every little bit of mechanical torque makes a difference. Um, and for me, like, you can blindfold me, you can, like, plug my ears up, you can do whatever you want. I can tell the difference between a 2207 and a 2306 motor, I mean, like, f almost from the first throttle blip. It, like, it is just very, very obvious um, for me. And, and yeah, I'm just such a, I, I just like 2306s better. They're also lighter, um, which it definitely matters for me. Uh, 2306s are usually one and a half to two grams lighter than, um, a 2207 that's built with the same materials and whatnot, right? To the same ish spec. Uh, B-Man FPV says, and the weight difference evens out, uh, Advantage wise, what do you mean, B man? I th although I think we just, I think I just answered that without even knowing it. Uh, Dauntless posted in Micro Blushless. Nice, Dauntless. I don't, I don't have Discord up, but I'll, I'll jump on there. Uh, hey, we're caught up. Cool. And it's only 11:30. Let's get a little bit of something rather done. Uh, I didn't find the donor for this build before the stream. So I have to do it now. And that sucks. 
But, well, yeah. I was going to say, let's just fly tiny whoops, but no, we're not going to do that. Uh, where is it? Where did, there it is. Ha! It was on the wall. I put it on the wall. All right, so this guy, uh, this is a CB3 frame. Uh, this is the second magical, amazing three-inch frame that I've found in my FPV career that as soon as I found it became discontinued. <laughs> Um, this ESC blew up, and I smashed the shit out of the out of one of the lenses on the Runcam Hybrid. Uh, and I think when the ESC went, I think it might have cooked this motor because a huge column of smoke came out of here. Um, so, I, I previously I was going to build this from scratch, but um, I'm just going to put it in here uh, in order to change the ESC. I have to completely pull this thing like all the way down. Uh, so screw it. Let's just yank this thing apart. We'll swap the ESC and then we'll drop it in here. Um, <clears throat> and away we go. So we will have a Runcam hybrid Insta360 Go dual. Not, I, I've, I've gone from. I've gone from begging for HD on micros to building micros with two HD sources. Um, main reason being, I don't always want to carry the Insta360 Go. And um, having the Runcam Hybrid in there is like a, it, it's, it's not that much of a weight penalty. I mean, it is. But um, a three-inch rig with these big-ass motors, it's going to be fine. It's going to be just fine. It'll have plenty of, uh, of Majimbo, as Brad says, to, uh, to move this little fella around. Uh, Toxic FB says those tiny LEDs are so bright. <laughs> right? They are quite bright. Ooh! I put titanium hardware in here, and it doesn't look like I've flamed it. So we can play with fire. What do you think of that, guys? We can play with fire. Raindog says 2207s are more punchy, more top end. Um, well, so so those are two those are two totally different things, um, in in my opinion at least. Uh, punchy. I would give the advantage in punchiness to 2306s because of the fact that they have more mechanical torque, they spin the prop up faster. Um, that in my opinion is like punch, like I punch the throttle and the quad like leaps up in the air. Um, I think 2306s do that a lot better than 2207s, um, but 2207s most certainly have more top end. Um, that is a goddamn fact. Um, and really, that's the reason to run 2207s. Like, if, if, if you're running 2207s for some other reason, you might be doing it wrong. <laughs> um, in my opinion, the only reason to run a 2207, um, you know, a heavier motor, a motor that is not going to perform as well on the... Uh, the PID loop is not going to perform as well with... Um, the only reason if is if a 2306 at the top of the throttle just doesn't have enough for you. If, if you just need more, if you need to go 90 instead of 80, um, if you need to jump over 10 trees instead of eight, <laughs> uh, 2207s will do that. And, um, yeah, I you know I will say this uh, the the T motors uh, pacer twenty two oh seven and a half this um, I have a review that's all ready to go I just have to do the voiceover um, these almost changed my mind on on twenty two oh sevens they're still unbelievably heavy these these motors are like like eight grams heavier than the twenty three oh sixes I run like they make the rig feel horrible 
Um, I mean, for me, in, in, you know, from in, in my for my unrealistic expectations. But um, other than that, I was really blown away by these. Uh, they they did not have the. I can I can typically tell in right in the in the middle to like low throttle. That's where I can really tell the difference between a twenty three oh six. Uh, and a 2207, the, the, 20, the 2207 just feels lost in there. It, it, it's just not, it, it just doesn't feel anywhere near as locked as a, as a 2306 in the middle of the throttle uh, or as responsive. Um, and those 2207 and a halfs, they did not feel like that. They felt really nice. Um, it's a shame they're so heavy. And, and unfortunately, I, th I think the, the weight and, and like the, so the, the weight, is is basically just making a bigger um <laughs> up a notch <laughs> thank you brandon that's my job here is done i'm out brandon said i'm the best that's it bye, -bye. <laughs> stream over B-Man says, white family man, white man finally loses it. Join, join us on the live stream. Uh, Rain Dogs is debating on a set of Velox for first 5-inch build. Do it, Rain Dogs. I, I'm, I'm a real fan of the Veloxes right now. Uh, would you still pick the Pacers over them with the weight savings and almost half price tag? No. Uh, Rain Dogs, I would do the, uh, the Velox 2306s for sure. Where's that quad at? Um... I'll show you how much I like them. And that's what you want right there, bro. Velox 2306 in pink. Buy the blue ones, though. The blue ones are higher KV. And in Betaflight 4.2, you can just turn the RPM down. I, uh, if, if I have to buy any replacements for these, they're going to be the... Uh, Oh god, they're gonna be the uh, the blue ones for the higher KV. I, for the record, guys, I'm uh, I'm doing the. Uh, I will never buy another motor that's not the highest KV uh, available in that motor. Like I'm 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 in. I'm, I'm, I that uh, my main rig has a. 2400 kV and three 1900 kV motors. See the difference in the color of the windings? That, that's how I can prove it to you in case you didn't believe me. Um, but yeah, so not only, I mean, you've always been able to do that. You, you've always been able to mix and match. And basically what happens is the lowest kV motor wins. And, and that's what, it's more complicated than that, but the pid loop just figures it out. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My buddy Rick from college, who I talk to like once a year, um, <laughs> he just text messaged me. Um, he, he's not usually political at all, uh, but he just text messaged me and all it said was, this fucking country. <laughs> 
Kristen likes that. Um, Athic says, 2207 handles a higher pitch prop control like for racing. Very true. Yeah, for racing, you're up in the high throttle, so that's why a lot of racers love the 2207s. Um, uh, <laughs> Dauntless seems to like the dance. Uh, License to Drive thinks I lost it. Uh, Rob Axison said... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Screw you, Rob. Uh, Tweet is wondering what he just watched. I have no idea. Uh... <laughs> B-Man says, fuck Dancing with the Stars, uh, Dancing with the Wingnuts. Aphex FPV says, it's official, you lost it and become the ring leader of the shit show. Oh, I've been that forever. It's Clam Mailbag, B-Man says. <laughs> what is happening? What are we doing here? What is going on? Oh, what was that? Wait, that's not what I want. Where is it? Um, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm in the mood to build right now. <laughs> this whole, this whole stream, the picture, the the description, everything is surrounding this build. And I'm just not in the mood. Hey, what's the, uh, what's the, what's, uh, what's his, uh, the puppet kid's name? Uh, uh, Bar Bar Barnaby, no, Bar Barnaby, that's it. Uh, check this out, guys. This is much more important than this build. Barnaby Dixon. Um, if you all don't go follow Barnaby Dixon, I'm gonna stab you in your faces. Here's Barnaby's site. Go follow Barnaby. Look at this. Tell me this isn't... This is what I was just, like, channeling. That's better. I was getting pretty sick of seeing his crotch bobbing around the back of every single freaking puppet dance video. That we... Oh, hey, folks. Uh, so we hit one million subs. I hope that we catch it down. A longer version of... This is admittedly a little bit of a weird one. Let me, let me, hold on. <laughs> stay, stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Barnaby's a weird dude. He's a, he's a great guy. But that's not a good, uh, that's not a good first. Hold on. He's been on Tested before. That's, that's how I found out about him was on, uh, he was on Tested with Adam. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's incredible. Oh God. Yeah. Look at this one. All right, here you go. Look. So he builds, he built, he makes, he builds these puppets and then puppets them. He's a, he's a puppeteer. Um, but he builds them and like the, the, oh, it's so, here. <laughs> hey, man, this. this is my latest puppet. He's kind of like a, sort of like a bug man sort of thing. I'm not sure exactly what, but check out how he moves. So he's based very heavily on my Manu puppet design from um, over a year ago now in terms of... Is it just me? That's the coolest shit in the world. Uh, maybe it's just me. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, 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 that do, I want that dude to, to, to be... No, I refuse, Airbender. Uh, B-Man says... Uh... <laughs> nice. And uh, Greg Womack says the uh, the brother hobby in clearance is gone. Uh, I like the fifteen oh four went back to the higher KV and they were gone. You did it. Ugh, sorry guys. <laughs> no, they didn't have the um, never Chris. Uh, they didn't have the the high KV in the in the clearance. I didn't think. I think they only had like the two thousand 
800 or whatever KV, which is not what you want. So I, I, I don't think you missed anything. Um, all right, we got to, I, I got we, I got to build. All right. Enough, uh, enough, uh, you know, having fun. What? Oh, sick. Oh, I bet you he's coming on the 7th and 8th. Correct. Yeah. Uh, it's up to you. Oh, I don't care. I think I, I like bot, so it's... Kristen likes bot. Confirmed. <laughs> so it's up to you. I don't know what's going on, so... I mean, yeah. I'm passing along the... Stand by. Uh, Mr. Rogers is rolling over in his grave. How dare you? <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, computer, come on, come on, come on, go, 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 computer, go, 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 go. And that includes... I said you're always welcome to crash here, and that includes November 7th and 8th for James's Fly Day. All right. And we're good. Building. We're, bu we're building. We're going to build. Here we go. First, we're going to demolish. Uh, this, uh, the build of this frame is probably going to be two or three streams worth of, uh, worth of, uh, you know, making the quad dance on the bench and other various absolutely asinine things that I'll more than likely do. Uh, but what we're going to do right now is play with fire. Uh, this is titanium hardware. This is the old school titanium hardware. Uh, that strips out really easily, so be careful. Uh, this is the, the TI hardware that you can get from uh, GetFPV or RDQ, and I don't recommend you get it uh, because it strips out too easily. But since I already have it, you know, I might as well make it all pretty in blue and purple. Uh, before you do this, if, if your hardware is not, if your titanium hardware is not like fresh out of the bag, just wipe it off. Any, any little fingerprints uh, when you get it hot. I mean, this, this goes for, like, when you get anything hot anywhere. Um, well, like, glowing hot, I should say. Uh, fingerprints are bad. The, the oil from our hands will, uh, will show up and look like a bag of shit. So uh, wipe off your titanium before you set it on fire. Which is what I'm doing. I mean, anybody who's anybody sets their titanium ablaze. I heard. Bot's coming through. Yo, no, B man, no, I'm I'm not gonna live stream that. I'm gonna fuck it. It's gonna be a 24 hour live stream. He's gonna be sleeping in here, so I'm just gonna leave the goddamn stream on. <laughs> fuck! I just dropped titanium. Ugh. Ah! I found you, you sneaky little shit. All right. Here we go. Uh, I think I wiped that one off, but... Can't be too safe. All right. And... I'll try to do it for you guys again, because... Who doesn't like a little challenge that involves fire? Oh, you... God... Damn son of a bitch. No, and I just put my big fat stupid thumb on top of it. Alright, there's one. And where'd that other one go? Did you guys see where it went? Where'd it go? Found it. Oh, I have some of the, uh, this is the new Pyro Drone titanium hardware. I'll do this at the same time. And you'll get to see the difference um, in in the bluing. What you won't be able to tell through the internet 
is the difference in strip out ability <laughs> in that these new pyro drone uh shiny uh ti button heads don't seem to be stripping out anywhere near as bad as these old school dull ones um and that was my only complaint about the uh about the old titanium hardware that you were able to get and that was kind of like the reason that i stopped running it all right, let me try to get a little bit of uh, uh, focus action. All right, so if I set the focus like that, I can manage the focal distance, but I do want to move it back a little bit. All right, let's just move it back there. Is that about right? Oh yeah, that's the stuff. All right, here we go. Enjoy. Wait, do you guys have enough light? Yeah. The second that you see it go blue, you remove the heat. And usually what it'll then do is go a little bit perfect. I also skip every other just to make sure that the uh, I don't get the previous one too hot. If you get them too hot, you won't get the nice bluing. You'll get this like stupid light blue. So these are now the old the old moldy ones, and they um, yeah they just don't look as good. See how that one I just did went like kind of light blue? I got it too hot. I got that one too hot as well. The old ones are way easier to overdo than these shiny ones. Probably because the shiny ones you can just straight up see it change color uh, faster. Hopefully that was somewhat in focus, but I doubt it. Um, you guys are even closer. There you go. That back side is all still yellow. Let's uh, let me take care of the of the back side a little bit here. You guys won't be able to see it, but and maybe you guys will. There we go. That's better. So yeah, that's how you do that. Make your titanium hardware blue and purple. You know what, if, if nothing else, it makes it uh, easier to find it in your toolbox, <laughs> which I realized recently. I was like, ah, this is, why am I doing this? And then I was kind of digging around the toolbox. I'm like, oh, they stand out like a sore thumb. That's kind of nice. Um, I mean, you can also just put a fucking magnet on them, but. Uh, all right. Going back to autofocus and more disassemble Johnny 5. And this build, guys, this thing is going to go up and down buildings. This, this, this thing, it's going to really, it's going to really do some work. It's going to be a hard worker, this quad. Uh, what I do need to figure out is... Uh, whether or not I want to do these 6,000 kV 1306s or the 4,000s, um, I have them, and uh, I'm putting an ESC in. This is the Speedix IS35, uh, and this is a uh, this will go up to 5s, which is kind of nice. So. In theory, I feel like I should put the, uh, in theory is not the right thing to say, I just say it a lot. Uh, I, I feel like I should put the 4,000 kV motors in because I can then just run them on 5S, right? And I'll save these 6,000 kVs for, for a, a 4S only um, 
ESC, right? But um, I did kind of have the plan of of running this rig on uh, trying this rig on two and a half inch. I'm sorry, two inch propellers with two and a half inch ducts uh, because this won't. I'm sorry, this won't clear a three inch propeller with a three inch duct. N not much will. Pretty much you have to get a four inch rig at that point, right? Because a, a duct, a duct that's gonna clear a three inch prop, that duct is gonna be damn near four inches. That's what she said about the male duck. She said he's got a tiny donger. A tiny Johnson. Uh, Athix is going to go f try and fly a crane soon when I get my new Insta360. Athix, you're going to love it. It is real fun. Uh, and a really good spot to practice Matty flips. Pre possibly the best spot uh, to practice everything and anything pitch forward. Because the boom of the crane is the most wonderful visual reference point. Uh, so you can just like fly over that big long bastard, pitch forward, and then just play. Flip back up over it, stay on the same side, but drop down. All the shit that I did in that uh, crane edit, man. That's all made so much easier by uh, by the fact that the crane is there. That's not what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, hey, I've got a uh, I've got something coming for the mount of this camera to move this camera this way so that you guys will look more like kind of straight down on what I'm doing, which uh, which should be a little bit better. So stay tuned for that. Basically, it's uh, I, I I found. I haven't found the exact one that I want yet, but on Amazon there are um, so every single like tripod in the known universe uses a quarter twenty um, threaded um, bolt basically on top to secure to the bottom of your camera GoPro or whatever, and uh, so that's basically what I'm looking for on Amazon is a is a quarter twenty extender, um, literally just female on one side, male on the other to just. Yeah, this camera is just too far in this direction. I need to pull it this way, and the mount, the mount is, is on my toolbox, kinda, uh, not kinda. It is. So yeah, I'm hoping I can get a carbon fiber one because I'm gonna have to mount it uh, to this ball head that I have here, and uh, it's not the gr it, It's it's kind of like an El Cheapo twenty dollar ball head, so it's not. Uh, it's not all that great, so I want to try to keep the weight down. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to not have a big, to have to have this thing be a big, heavy chunk of metal. Uh, Rick Zapata says, I'm anxious to fly with my Insta360 Go. Uh, just need to make some mounts for it. Yeah, um, I still am. Like, it still freaks me out, man. It, it just seems super fragile, but um, yeah, I mean, fuck it. Warranty it. Get, you know, make sure you have the warranty and just break it. <laughs> like that's kind of what it comes down to. Like when it, when I have those thoughts, I'm just like, no, just just go break it. Like just break it. <laughs> go out, and then if you don't break it, if you go out and you fly it and you don't break it, it's a huge win. So yeah, go break it, man. You'll be all right. The, the fucking rimmiest Tim in all the land. Just got home. Daniel, you should um, you should rewind about fifteen minutes and uh, look for look for a dance routine. Look for look for a quad doing a dance routine in in the DVR. Um, it got pretty wild up in here, man. Was, there was hose. Running around naked, naked, naked hose up in here. It's 
not true. Nobody got naked. Don't worry. Um, Pickle Rick is on Adult Swim. Hasn't it always been? I don't. I, I've never watched um, Rick and Morty on. Well, I mean, I, I kind of have just not watched television <laughs> in in for about as long as I can remember. Look at this, more titanium hardware. Should we light it on fire? Uh, actually, I'm gonna because I I have not gotten one of these more. These are this is four more of the dull titanium, and I I've still not managed to get the dull titanium to go nice and purple. It, it keeps going too far into the light blue world, and that makes me angry. So. Here's the shit that I just did. It should be cool by now. Yeah. So here are the ones that I just did. I could just use them, but no. No. We're going to do four more. We are going to do four more real quick, like. One. Two, two, two. Oh, the Pickle Rick episodes. Ah, all right, Adult Swim, all right, all right, all right. I wonder how much Dan got for that. Jesus, Dan being Dan Harmon, the writer alongside of... Ah, I forget his name. Who co-writes all the uh, Rick and Mortys with Dan? Jason Ryland. Ryland, right. Dan and Ryland um, are the writers, and... Uh, Dan is also the writer and director of Community and Monster House and oh, uh, what the hell did he do before Community? Uh, and he's got a podcast called Harmontown that you guys will probably love. It's my favorite podcast. It's actually gone now. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, look him up, man. Dan Harmon. Good dude. I know, right, Chris? <laughs> Chris said Dan Harmon and Roiland can print their own $100 bills. Mm -hmm. They could stand on Fifth Avenue and shoot me in the face, and I would still vote for... <laughs> Here we go. Are you guys excited? I'll probably screw them up. All right, so I'm going to let go early on that one. And see, it went really light blue. What the fuck? There's a chance this one, these last two that I'm on are stainless steel and not titanium. But they are changing. Yeah, these ones... Wow, okay. All right, yeah, so you got to really jump off. Like, the second that it changes color, you got to get out of these old uh, dull ones. A little bit of color, just enough. I, at this point, to be honest, I'm I, I like it's it's just as nice for me to color them so that I can see them in the toolbox easier. <laughs> um, so yeah. Okay, donor rig. Uh, let me think about this for one second though. The ESC has to come out. The spacing of the stack. I think I can reuse. No, I can't because I've got arms through the standoffs here. Uh, so I can't, I can't use those. But that's okay, because I said so. Um, ah, fuck it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, we're gonna use the whole thing. We're just gonna totally take this apart. It's going to be fine. Daniel Maurer says, oh, were you trying to get me to rewind to see Barnaby Dixon? Freaking love it. No shit. It, I, someone else in the world knows of Barnaby Dixon. Uh, I just saw he does not have many subs. <laughs> I thought he had way more subs than that. Um, did you find him on Tested as well? Uh, I don't know the first time I found him. But I know when he worked with Adam Savage, I gained appreciation. Yeah, for sure. He was also, uh, he, his, his biggest break so far, uh, he did work with um, Barnaby Dixon, that is. 
He did work with uh, Dark... Um... Ah, shit! It's got a cult following, and I'm not in that cult following. Dark Crystal? Dark Crystal, yeah. Uh, he just worked on Dark Crystal. <laughs> B-Man says, focus! <laughs> Speaking of builds, I might, because it seems like you guys are somewhat interested in it, uh, I might start building quads to sell. Uh, here's the problem. If I sell them for a hundred, I mean, you guys have seen me build, right? So, minimum... It's going to be like four hours of labor, realistically. Um, maybe I can shorten that up by assembly lining shit, but I can't really afford to buy enough stuff to really assembly line, right? So four hours of work into the builds, um, four or five hours of work into the builds, I'm going to have to charge like a hundred plus dollars over what they're worth. I mean, hopefully that's worth it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend more time tuning it and shit, too. I don't know. I, I, I just... Um, I've never built and sold rigs before because it's just never seemed like it would be even remotely worth uh, the, the time spent, right? Like, it, it, it's always seemed like, in the end, I'm going to end up paying myself $5 an hour. Um, and I'm just not willing to do that. Like, I'm... I'm yeah, that's just not going to happen. So, I don't know. I, I, I understand that you guys want it, but how bad do you want it? <laughs> do you want it, like, $150 over what you could build it for yourself? Want it? Or do you want it $50 more than, than what you could build it for on, on your own, right? Um, because I can tell you right now that there's just no way in hell, like, I, there's just absolutely no way that, um, I could do it for a $50 margin. Um, the other thing that kind of fucks it up is even a, like I've seen what all of our shops pay for a, a lot of the stuff and it is just criminal. <laughs> like, uh, like, yeah they don't make any money um so even if i was able to get some kind of a miraculous discount ah that's why everything is bonging and beeping and thanks guys june loco with a two dollar super chat thank you june loco that is quite nice of you um i'm gonna read the comment in one second uh, so Facebook messages are a good thing to send me because I can hear the noises. Bacom! I just heard another one. There we go. Sorry about that, everybody. I'm smooth-brained. Sometimes. Oh my god, the chat. Focus out for a while now, Brandon Bakes Bean says. b -Man says, camera dude, not you. T-Bird says, focus. Oh, <laughs> Focus was for the camera, not for me. <sighs> Obese Quad says, what's a good frame for 1206 five thousands? Uh, two and a half inch. I would put those on a two and a half inch uh, frame. And I would look for one that is somewhere around, let's say... I would not want the frame to be more than like 25 or so grams, if at all possible. And then, yeah, beyond that, it's kind of on you. Uh, I don't know if you want to do HD. I mean, you know, there's a million different uh, frame designs with different uh, advantages. You guys didn't miss much, to be honest. I'm just taking... Uh, I'm just taking this shit apart. 
so that I can get some of my parts and pieces ready. Alright, there we go with that. Um, <laughs> Ken Hill calling out the little screen. Uh, B-Man says, what we want at the moment is to see straight. <laughs> Dalton says, that's the thing. Uh, I want the kits for $50 over the original price. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the other thing that, that you guys have mentioned are like kits that, that I've, um, you know, like selected the parts for, uh, so to do a kit like that, I'm going to probably spend like a half an hour, an hour putting the order in, getting that, that shit all organized. Um, and then that's about it. So uh that's much more realistic but i just i don't know how many people are are actually going to do that and and the the other thing is like what the hell do i put in the kit like do i just say fuck it and the kit gets uh 1504 and a half because i like them but then the problem is like that's a terrible motor for for a two and a half inch rig or a two inch rig or a um or an acrobrat right like um yeah, I, I would have to have like a rip squeak package of, of electronics and then I'd have to have like an acrobrat package and um so yeah. I don't know. I I, I feel like just telling you guys what to buy is, is gonna be much more realistic. I because I I don't know. I mean you guys tell me. You guys tell me what you want. And I'll do it, because that's the way it has to be. Um, you guys are literally paying my salary. So uh, if that's something you want, I'll do it. But it's got to be more than just uh, Dauntless. T-Bird says, what did you have in the Tiny Trainer? Um... In terms of what, what uh, I, I, I forget what we were talking about, T-Bird. Um, Rick Spada says, the extra 100 is well worth it to the buyer. I would go 200 over uh, just to say that I'm flying quad you tuned. Yeah, Rick, 200 is, is more realistic, to, to be totally honest. Like, because I'm sure that I'm going to go out and tune each one, um, and I'm sure that there's going to be customer service stuff after the fact, right? you got to factor that into your original price. Um, but 200 over, like, A, that's almost going to double the price of the builds. Um, I, I just, I don't know, I don't know if anybody's going to buy it. Um, I don't know if anybody's going to be willing to pay that, I should say, right? Uh, there are just so many available resources to us. Um, with Joshua and, and... Joshua and, and, you know, Joshua. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm definitely thinking about it though. It's, uh, the, uh, the wheels are turning. Uh, hopefully Jamie still wants me to build her that glide rig because that'll be, uh, I, I'm, I'm, that's going to be like the test run that that's going to be like see exactly what it costs, see if I can get all the parts from, like, just two stores, um, work out the time frame, figure out, you know, how long it actually takes me to put that order in, shit like that. Uh, so, yeah. Hopefully that's still go That's still on. We shall see. All right, we got this thing coming apart here now. We out here. B-Man with a $5 super chat. Thank you, sir. I got to add those to the gear fund over there. Uh, Want to get more savvy on PID tuning? Would you do a private session on that? Yeah, for sure. Um, so on the, uh, on the Fiverr shop, there is an item for tuning. Um, it's in-person tuning, uh, but the prices are the same. And the time frame is all there. Um, so yeah, if, if any of you guys want one-on-one -on -one tuning help, um, CIDFPV.com, hit the Fiverr button, 
and you'll see. It's one of the items there, um, and it's just time-based. It's half an hour, hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours. Two hours seems seems like it's it's a bit much, but um, yeah, buy whichever package you want. Um, uh, get Skype, hopefully, and um, that's about it. Not it'll do it. Uh, Private Island says uh, they're certainly there for a little while at least. They'll definitely be more rare than a steel ready to fly, <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah, Zoom will work, B man. I um, yeah, Zoom is actually good because I haven't downloaded Zoom and I know that I need to. Uh, Jason Crabtree with a five dollar super chat. Thank you, Jason. Uh, the, uh, to list the parts to your ideal acrobat builds. Uh, on your website or Patreon, would be cool to see lists of parts for most of your builds and maybe PIDs. Uh, PIDs, I, I really don't share, Jason, uh, mainly because my PIDs are very boring. They're the stock PIDs turned up by 10. Um, also because I just, I, I despise the idea of any of you guys just taking my PIDs and dumping them into a rig. Um... Uh, or just any, like just taking anyone else's PIDs and just dropping them blindly onto a rig is very dangerous. Um, in terms of my Acrobat builds, um, they're up on Patreon. I have a, a, a post on Patreon with actually three different Acrobat builds, uh, like mine and then like a budget one. And then I think I did a buy all the stuff in one shop from get FPV, uh, set up there. Uh, the only change is X Nova 1804s across the board. <laughs> um, that's just the motor. If, if there's an Acrobrat out there that doesn't have those motors, it's a shit bag Acrobrat and it should be beaten with a metal folding chair. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're that good. They are that good. They're perfect. They're the perfect motor. It's never happened before, but I think it's finally happened. We've achieved micro motor perfection. We've achieved it. Man, I have to at least get this thing all the way taken apart. I mean, at the very least, I have to have all of the parts required for this build lined up. Yeah, I'm gonna write the word begins in the uh, in the title of this stream. That'll make me feel a little bit better. Uh, Rick Zapata says, at least we know if we order one from you, we get the help with it. Uh, Bardwell's Xylo kit has been out of stock for months. Uh, that's, has it really? That's annoying. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, I, you know, the, the other thing too, like, I doubt that I'll be able to get the, the glide frame any cheaper. Um, although I know on the poll that I did, a lot of you, there were less people interested in 5 inch than 3 inch, so I guess it wouldn't be all about building glides. Um, um, yeah, I, you, know, you know what I would love? I would love if uh, Bill from BQE would get back to me, and um, it would be really cool to do something together with him on that. Uh, maybe like a, a rip squeak with uh, with arms that support 12 by 12 motors, for example. Uh, that would be huge. I would love that. Um, I would absolutely love for that to be like a Ciotti edition rip squeak, and then uh, maybe I can order like 20 of those frames from them or something and get them cheaper and then do a whole bunch of those builds. Um, although, as you're gonna get to see with this build, 
that may very well end in my quitting the hobby. Uh, these three inch builds with the uh, with the run cam hybrid in them and the five volt and the external five volt BEC for the run cam hybrid. Uh, this is a motherfucker of a build. Uh, it's um, well. Stay tuned. You'll you'll get to see it. You'll you'll get to see all the trials and tribulations that I can all but guarantee you this build is going to go through. Um, I don't know why. It it, it 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 doesn't make a whole lot of sense as to why every single time I build a CB3, which is basically what this build is. It's, this is my. This is just dropping a build that I've been doing for two and a half years on the CB two and a half and CB threes uh, into a different frame. What I'm trying to do right now, though, is get this goddamn flight controller up and off of here, but the wires are being jackasses. Uh, Jonathan King says X Nova eighteen oh four thirty five five hundred kb. That's the one. Uh, obese quads. I see your comment. I'm gonna read it in one second. Once I figure out why the bloody hell this thing won't come off, there it goes. All right, so we're good. Now I can drop these vertical screws out, for the stack screws, and everything will just fall apart from there. In a good way, though. Uh, I know you said you don't like editing. I'd pay for editing help. Uh, it's new to me, and I'm overwhelmed with it. So the only problem with my trying to help you with editing is uh, I only know Adobe Premiere, and most people don't have the $40 a month Adobe subscription to get Adobe Premiere. Uh, I could probably also help out in iMovie. Uh, I used to use iMovie. I, I haven't used the, the whatever the hell the current version of it is. Uh, but I could probably learn it pretty quick. So in terms of like technical help, uh, yeah, I'm going to be a little bit limited there. But if, if you're looking for, so when, when I, when I do my editing streams, um, I try to only really talk about, like, uh, kind of like theor. I was about to say theoretical, but that's not the right word. Um, uh, like, I try to just talk about. I, I I try to just say things that'll apply to all editing software. So I try not to say, "Hey, look at this trick in Premiere. Do, do this in Premiere." Because not only are not many people watching editing streams, but you then break that audience down again in what software they have, right? So, uh, yeah, I can help with that, right? I can help with like, like, oh, I would put a cut here, uh, or I would bail on this, or, uh, you know, this is way too long, cut it down in, in half. Um, or see how the music picks up here. Let's reorganize this, uh, you know, or these four clips because they're a little bit, fa you're flying a little bit faster. Let's put those on top of the uh, more energetic mu uh, section of music, right? Um, so shit like that I can help with. You know, that, that's the stuff that that I was lucky enough to, uh, to learn in uh, uh, back at university. And it's stuff that is uh, program non-specific. So yeah, same deal on the uh, on the if if um, you can just use the uh, the tuning item for the uh, for the editing time if you if you guys want. Oh my god, what is happening? I'm trying to not pinch this goddamn power cable, but man, it is just 
All you gotta do is bitch about it, and then it'll immediately stop being an asshole. Uh, T-Bird says, do you want purple TPU for the rip squeak? I actually have a bunch of TPU um, for this thing. Uh, um, Crumped actually printed me uh, a bunch of TPU out for the BQB mic rip squeak, so I'm, I'm good. I appreciate it, though, man. Uh, hey, Manamana is here. What is up? Uh, Tortoise Fuga says, 3,500 sounds low for 3-inch, but... I've been in toothpick and on two and three S. Um, yeah, it sounded low to me too. I didn't, um, I didn't think it was going to be enough KV, but my God, is it ever, <laughs> uh, they make serious power. Uh, and I really like them on, uh, and they match really well with the T motor 3140 props, uh, which is my favorite. Oh, that's the durable three-inch prop. I'm a dumb dumb. Uh, you know, earlier, when when somebody was asking about that, I was thinking T-mount. Um, so I don't have a good T-mount durable three-inch prop option. But M5 nut uh, three-inch props. The T motor 3140 is the answer to everything. Um, it's durable. It's not too pitchy. Uh, it's it comes in red. That's important. Yeah, T motor thirty one forty is the best three inch prop available, in my opinion. Gem fan did a really good job on it. <laughs> I'm ninety nine percent sure Gem fan makes T motors props for them. You didn't hear it from me though. But I mean, I, like, that would be. See, I would like. I would, if I were T Motor, I would want that to be public knowledge because Gemfan makes the best props. <laughs> like, I would be like proud to. Uh, you know what I mean? That'd be a selling point. Mm -hmm. Oh, just in case you missed it. Speaking of uh, T Motor propellers. Come on, you fucker! Oh my god, my hand's getting tired. Goddamn Nylock. That's why I didn't get anything done in this build, because my hands got too tired. There it is. Whew! My god. Um, uh, uh. Don't be fooled. These are T motor, T mount, 3 inch Cinewoop propellers. They're called. T seventy sixes, and they don't work. Uh, they are drilled so that they will only work on T motors T mount fifteen oh seven. So don't buy T seventy sixes unless you have those motors. Public service announcement. Ooh. Ooh, just like that? That was a good one. Uh, Ken Hill says, get the, the carb wrenches. Oh, good call. I'm sitting here like, how the fuck did I get these so t Like, how did I get these nuts down here so tight? Uh, and it was the carb wrenches. Good goddamn call. Look at the big brain on Ken. Later, T-Bird. Have a good night, man. And one more, and then we can just slop. Oh, I gotta take the fucking motors off. Really? No, I don't. Uh, because I'm not using them. Ha! <laughs> yep. I can just leave the motors here. Oh, shit. I took this hardware out for nothing. I can just leave this hardware here. Oh man. Well, no big deal. I had to remove the uh, I had to remove the top part of the hardware anyway to get the uh, to get this ESC off of here. That's right, I said offa. Offa. 
Uh, Manamana just ordered GemFan5147. He's getting Joshua Bardwell's props. He's going to like them. They go very fast. They make your battery want to die. Uh, Rain Dog's data logs didn't tag me, so I didn't see it, but now I can see it. He says, 1804s are rare. Uh, have you tried them with your new 6S? Um, I have run them on 4, 5, and 6S on the Acrobrat. Uh, and five, on, on 5 and 6S, though, it's... Uh, they're it's set to scale uh they're scaled way back so they they feel exactly the same as they do on 4s um and what's really cool is because uh beta flight will like auto read uh the voltage for you the way i have it set up in beta flight is that i don't have to do shit like the i set up three different profiles one for four, one for five, one for six S. Um, in the PID screen, you can tell it. You can tell it for the, the the currently selected profile how many cells you want that profile to be active on. So it's really easy to do that. And then um, yeah, you just grab a calculator and figure out the the scaling that you need, and drop that in there as well, and you're done. You, you, if you plug in a 5S, it reads the voltage, sees that it's a 5S, and it switches you to that specific uh, profile. And away you go. You don't have to think about it. The only thing you have to think about is when, uh, if you, and this has already bit me in the ass, when I tune in the OSD, I have to tune on all three profiles. Um, what I actually do is... I um, just make the changes to the one tune and then just try to remember which tune that was, which, which, how big that battery was. And then when I get home, I'll, uh, I'll make that, the, those changes to the, other, to the other two profiles. Oh my god, Athix is about to start a 13-hour print. Rest in peace air quality in Athix's uh, domicile. That's what the cool kids say, right? Rest in peace, and then controversial things. <laughs> controversial. <laughs> controversial. Who do you think you are? I'm the devil. If you're looking for a new show to watch on Netflix, uh, it, and you're not religious, uh, maybe check out the show Lucifer. I think it's funny. I like jokes about God, though, because I'm a godless heathen. So maybe it's not for you. <laughs> but maybe it is. But if you can get past that, I think it is. Because that shit's funny. I think I just lost Kristen. Don't know for sure, but I think she's gone. 13 hour print, my god. Zanakis is digging on the rain. I haven't even heard of that. What's, uh, what's the deal with the rain? Hit me with it. Hit me! Huh! Ugh! Um, I would kind of, it's all, everything is all fucking, eh, honk. Um, yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. I see how it is. Uh, yeah, all right. All right, all right, all right. What? What's he saying? Is he talking to himself? Oh, God. William Carson is losing his mind. Up fatty? What the fuck is up fatty? Um, rain causes death of anyone at lands. <laughs> but it does a bit more than... Oh. I was reading that, goddammit! Uh, 
William, if these guys can't get you going, I certainly will, but I bet you they can because the collective is a bunch of brilliant ass motherfuckers. All right, let me just whop these uh, motor wires off real quick. Which needs to get done no matter what because the ESC blew up. So, I don't have a problem doing it. And when this and and this Weller soldering iron holds its temperature so well that doing like little stuff like this, you can really blow through it. Um, that's something that I really didn't know that I was missing with my old iron. It's just that the the ability to just tear through work. Like I, I just thought, and it, it does. Soldering does take time. It's it's not a it's not, um, it's not fast, but with the, with the old iron, like, it, it, there was, it couldn't be fast, like, it, it just couldn't, you would just have to sit on each pad for, like, five, ten seconds each, um, maybe not that long, but you guys know what I'm saying, you guys know what I'm saying, maybe you don't. That's okay, too, though. Come on. Don't... Don't make a liar out of me. You bastard. Get! Come on! Would you just... Could you... Okay. Curse of the dirty soldering iron. Curse of the Lazy Solder. Solder. Why is the last one got to screw with me? Oh, there's no more screwing with me. I'm coming in hot and wet. You can't, man, you, there's nothing you can do when I come in there hot and wet. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm going to get thrown in jail for that one. Uh, all right. We got them off of there. We got this big bundle of shit here now. We can... Um, and I'm actually going to reuse this. This is going to... Um, what the hell is that? Uh, this is going to be used... Um, oh, yeah, hey, look at this. I broke a uh, CB3 frame. I have only broken one of these. Uh, and of course, it's one of the goddamn solid... This is why I don't like solid base plate frames, because when you break them there, you've got a shitload of work to do, because you've got to tear the whole fucking thing apart. Um, but yeah, this was actually a grass a crash into the grass. Um, it was from, like, quite a ways up. Uh, and it did hit hard, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. Right on the, uh, right on the the motor mounting holes. That sucks. That's a that's a bad place uh, to have a failure, because that's an easy fix. Like if if this frame had been prototyped a little bit more, someone would have broken it here, and um, Jack, who made this design, uh, the original owner of of Rotorius, he would have beefed this area up a little bit. Um, so that yeah that that kind of sucks. That's I I hate hate to see crashes in that in that spot there um, because yeah it, it's it's just um, it's a sign of poor frame design unfortunately that that's not uh, that's not where you want it to break you want it to break down by the body it's uh, it's much stronger that it's much safer that way for it to break down by the body too get off get off because when you break at those motor mounting holes that that whole motor could come off um oh man you guys are in it hey Rick Zapata's watching Shit's Creek uh is, is it not just the greatest thing ever Rick and, and what's funny for Kristen and I who lived in New Jersey for 30 years and then moved south 
it's a special kind of funny for us. <laughs> um, there are moments in that show where we're just like, oh my god, <laughs> that's, that is way too real right now. <laughs> what is this? What, is, what the fucking glue is that? What the, oh, right, this is when I was using that other double-sided, uh, um, uh, words eluded him and he just stammered for 20 minutes alright that's good to go so this little guy can hang out for a little while uh, this is the frame and I might leave these motors on here I don't know um, but this is the frame that I'm going to swap this guy into. You know, I'm not going to leave these motors because um, any any micro frame at this point that will that has 12 by 12 mounting that I've got is getting these Brother Hobby 1504 and a They are that good, and I am that excited about them. So that'll be cool. I'll have two of these. Uh, I did, Athix. I did. I did. Why do you, Rain Dogs, why do you say that poor Orca module? Did something happen? I saw that he got them. I didn't see that something happened. Uh, I'm willing to bet that, uh, that they, uh, that they're sponsoring him. That would be uh, a big win for them. Four... Sure, because nobody in FPV works as hard as bot, <laughs> in my opinion. So these motors have to go. I might as well do it right now. Let's just zip them off. Uh, and the, you know what? These motors are going to go permanently. Uh, these are 12 by 12 1306s, and I genuinely feel that these 1504 and a are better than these in every way um, not that these aren't a great motor but the 1504 and a are something very special they're, they're a very special size and they're beautifully smooth um, yeah they're really good they're really really good super deluxe has arrived in the middle of the night to say hello It's on you now, chat. I introduced him. Now you got to say hello. Uh, Rick Spade says he hacked up the module cover so it would fit with he had. <laughs> um, he had. <laughs> Came to check on us. <laughs> Oh, super. Hey, check it out. Look at this. You'll love this. You're going to love my nuts, Super Deluxe. You're going to love my nuts, Super de, de Nuts. Eh. Look at that. The old red one. I stickered up the shit out of my uh, ethics bag. Look at that. Isn't that fun? What a good spot to put stickers. You know, what I, what a, a, a lightning bolt hit my brain. I realized that if I put stickers all over this, every time I go fly, this is sitting on the rear deck. So I can, like, put my shit next to it, take a picture, and then I can fucking tag all these people and become e-famous as a motherfucker. That's how I'm going to do it, people. That's how it's going to get done. And then there's the inside, man. Look at that. Look at it. Look at that. What a great place to put your stickers. Oh. I swear to God, if somebody doesn't go onto my fucking Etsy store and buy some of my stickers, I'm going to get a complex. Nobody's ordered stickers in like a month. Maybe I should stop sending them to people <laughs> for free. Oh, hey. Psst. By the way, I'm throwing in the small holographic stickers for pretty much everything. I got, um, I got like 200 of the, uh, of the small 
holographic CIDF PV stickers. So I've been throwing them into everything. So like for example, right, if you go on the Etsy store and you buy like some hardware, you'll end up getting a free sticker. Or like if you win a giveaway or um, send me something and then ask for it back. <laughs> Riggs of Pain says, bot hacked, oh. Uh, Rick, what, 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 what did you mean by, uh, oh, 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 to fit the module he uses. What? Why? DJ, what the hell? Doesn't it come with a module? Is, is the module that it came with that bad, I guess? That sounds crazy. That sounds ridiculous. Look at that, guys. A CB3 frame. And this is the ultra rare um, detachable arm version. This is the fucking ultra unicorn. Uh, I know. I only know of like three people in the world that have these. <laughs> And one of them, I believe, is in the chat right now. Uh, the other one is Noah. You guys remember Noah? Noah Reinhardt? Uh, he's got a couple of these. And... Wildfire. Why the fuck? Wildfire is not going to be better than anything. I guess it. I guess it didn't have a module. Maybe, maybe it 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 didn't have a module at all, and he had to do that. I guess, cause I. Yeah, I mean. I would just run orc with module. Screw it. Test the module as well as the goggle, right? Um. Yeah. Yeah. See. Why am I doing this now? What 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 is going on here? Okay, so uh, the setup for this Rip Squeak Micro is gonna be a Speedix. Wait, no. Let's clean it up. Let's 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 do a little housekeeping, and then we'll chat about the setup, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna call it for this stream actually. So, Speedix IS35, I have no idea if this is going to blow up or anything. I know nothing about these, so uh, I'm going to learn something. This is a BL Heli S uh, th uh, 35 or 30 or 25, or I think it's 35. I think it's IS35. I forget what it is. Uh, it's either 30 or 35 amps, It's and that's what the name is. It's, it's called IS... I think it's the IS-30, and I think it's 30 amp. Might be IS-35, 35 amp. Um, but yeah, BL Heli S, so we'll, put it, we'll get some Jazz Maverick up in there, or some uh, JESC, and uh, we'll make it happen. Also, we're going to have a Talon F4 V1 flight controller, uh, which does not have black box, because I don't need black box. I know... Uh, these motors very well, and I know that this frame is solid, uh, so I'm really not going to need black box. I'm going to do a... Oh! I'm going to do a Crossfire Nano, because this is going to be like my main micro, so it may as well have mad range. Or maybe not, because I don't have one. No, I do. There's one. Uh, so yeah, we're going to have a Crossfire Micro, finally. Uh, for an antenna, I'm going to use one of the new V2. Uh, that's important. If you have any of the V1 versions of these, throw them away. Uh, this is the V2, which is properly tuned. Mini Mortal T. So we're going to use that. And uh, VTX, I'll probably just reuse this. What the hell is this? 
oh no, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go audio on this. I'm gonna use one of the brand new Ishin Nano V2s because they have audio on board. They have a microphone and they output audio. And um, I've just decided to put audio on all of the shit that I build um, so that if I fly it around loud, noisy cars, I'll still be able to hear the propellers. Uh, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but I promise you that it is. Uh, if you go fly a drift event, you'll notice that uh, your head explodes and you have the most fun you've ever had. Uh, what, what did I do with... I thought I put them in here. Uh, yeah, what you're going to notice is you can't hear your propellers and you'll notice that your throttle control is like dog shit uh, because we like without even knowing it we use our ears to confirm when we blip the throttle and without that confirmation you just don't fly as good you're, you're just not as confident and when you're flying around thousand horsepower uh, drift cars trying to get six inches off of them that's a big deal ken hill got lucky and he sent my jas switch uh he threw in a scotty fpv sticker nice <laughs> hell yeah yeah i've been throwing them in for for a little bit now Woo! a little uh 20 by 20 board that's actually really handy to have that's uh Oh, and it's cardboard, so I can just smash holes right through it. That's uh, shockingly useful. Here's one of the new Ishins. Ishin makes really good VTXs for some reason. Um, it's always been a bit of an enigma, but who cares? Look at that big fat boy microphone on there. I haven't actually run one of these yet, so hopefully they don't uh, catch, and catch on fire and burn your house down. So yeah, we're going to use one of those. Uh, we'll probably go with a little um, True RC Singularity Shorty. Keep the, uh, keep the length under control. That's what she said. And then uh, we're going to go, I'm going to do the 4,000s. Since, since the CSC can handle 5S, I'm going to run um, these RCX 1306 9x9 mount base um, uh, 4,000 kV motors. And it's going to be great. It's going to be great. And... Uh, and yeah, and the and the run cam hybrid. So that's gonna be this build. Here it is, all laid out on the table. Now I can go away. <laughs> um, look at this. Look at look what I did. Look what I did, guys. I did a I did a bad thing. Look at the state of this. Oof. Look at all this shit. Look at it all. It's too much shit. I'm just doing this because you guys never get to see over there. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> After hours stream. <laughs> After hours. It's late and I'm getting loopy. It's late. Loopy. <laughs> oh, shit. 
sticks. There it is. I just kept turning and turning and turning the knob on this. Uh, that's what she said. All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to spend the next half an hour cleaning up because I've made a huge mess. Uh, and then... No, and then. Uh, look at that. Here you go. This is going to fix this. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm I'm a I'm a fucking I'm a lizard man, and I'm and I'm choking on lizard things. Uh, okay, cool. So I'm just gonna throw these guys away. License to drive says, "What are you talking about? That's tidy." Athic says, "I like that desk shape." Yeah, the the L thing is dope. I think I'll always have an L desk. Um, it's just really nice. It just really works well. Uh, Dauntless says, work ba uh, workspace is in the basement of the apartment building, which sucks because I always have to go back and forth up the stairs. Uh, but when I'm done, I just leave and, <laughs> leave and never clean it. That is almost worth it. Uh, and then uh, Rick Cepeda says, gotta go. We'll see you on Wednesday. Whoop, whoop. Indeed you will. Uh, oh, oh, speaking of, look at this. Look at this. I, I totally forgot to show you guys this. Those are Happy Model 1102 19,000 kV motors on the bigger propellers. Um, I actually haven't flown this yet. Buddy, can you move a little bit? Thank you. Uh, let's do a super quick setup. And I... I think I might actually just fly this thing quick uh, because I, I I waited until tonight to fly it with you guys and to do the set. I waited until tonight to do the setup. So let me just blast through it real quick, like and um, probably won't fly great, but it'll fly nose down, left, it's right, cool. left, right. Okay, so we're good there. Oh wow, it's on 4.1.5. Uh, so this is a Hummingbird uh, F4 flight controller and it's on 4.1.5. Fan effing tastic. Uh, 180, 4K, 4K, accelerometer. Get this out of here. Uh, FR Sky D, so it is D16, I guess. Or no, 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 D is for D8. Um, I don't want air mode on constantly. I do want D shot beeper, save and reboot. Uh, the ports should be good. I'm not even going to go in there. PID tuning. Um, let's round these numbers out a little bit just so that they're easier to work with. And. I don't know why they do that. They have more pitch, they have more roll D than pitch D. It's very strange. I've never seen that before. It might actually be a mistake. Um, we'll go 10, 20, and 60 on the feed forward. Kick this up to full 1.0 transition. Uh, turn this off, turn that off. Drop this down to 10. Put this to set point, change it to roll pitch. That looks good, and none of that matters. Uh, let's immediately push more D gain into it because it's gonna need it. Oh, tell me you didn't just, okay, good. Just in case. All right, uh, these are my indoor whoop rates actually no i think it's 0.3 uh indoors in acro mode whoops are a motherfucker uh so you gotta really um you gotta really get your center stick sensitivity under control if you have any hope of making a whoop work indoors um in acro how do you test a multimeter, William Carson says. I think with another multimeter, right? It's kind of the only way. 
let's turn our gyro filter filtering all the way up. I'm actually even going to go into expert mode. The gyro filtering doesn't really do much, which is why we can get away with that. Um, push the D term up to 1.2. Uh, leave this on medium, that should be fine. Drop this down to zero for a single dynamic notch filter. Uh, push the Q up to 250 and drop the minimum just down. Now nah, let's keep it at 150. It's a, it's a tiny whip, it'll be fine. All right, receiver, let's see if it'll bind. I mean, if it won't, we're kind of in trouble. A. A? Ooh, hopefully I can bind it from the CLI. Let's try that. Uh, this is a newbie drone whoop. And we want to bind. All right, let's see if we can do it in the CLI. Bind underscore RX. <gasps> Oh, that's so nice. Oh, it's just so nice. It's so nice to be able to do that. All right, it should be bound by now. Let's check it. Telemetry lost. Telemetry lost? Well, shit. Uh, although that's a good sign if it had telemetry. Yay! Oh, the sticks are all wrong. Let's go to tear. Let's go down to a thousand for the stick low. Two thousand for the stick high. Two points of dead band. Auto smooth this up to twenty. Save it and let's check it. All below a thousand. All above two. Uh, I'm sorry, all above 2,000, all below 2,000, aux 1, aux 2, aux 3, and aux 4, in theory, is RSSI, sure enough. So we're going to move RSSI channel over to aux 4, save it, and we're done with the receiver tab. Let's get our mode set, arm, we don't want angle, we do want horizon. And then we're gonna go beeper on three, all the way down. We're gonna go. I am gonna set LED low. I am gonna set LED low um, because this thing has some really cool LEDs on it, but I don't want those LEDs on when I'm doing like serious flying. So I'll set it up so that when my when my mode switch is in the middle, which is OSD on, um, acro mode, or all the way forward, which is OSD off with acro, um, it'll it'll drop the LEDs down. But then if I flip it up to horizon mode, it'll it'll make the LEDs go crazy. So I can put on a little light show. Um, Black, uh, air mode, yep, we're going to do the same thing with air mode. We're going to put it literally the same switch positions. And flip over after crash, we're going to put on aux 2 in the middle, because I think it's fun. And wait, no, I'm an idiot. I'm thinking of launch mode. Flip over after crash is on aux 3 in the middle. Launch control is on aux 2 in the middle. Uh, video action pit mode. Black box. Okay, we're good. I think that's it, right? Those are all the things. Nah, OSD, of course. All right, copy and paste for OSD. Save it. Uh, yeah, Dauntless, I use Horizon as a, um, oh fuck switch. Uh, if I lose video, I can just flick my left index finger forward and it'll go into Horizon mode. And it'll just give me a fighting chance of, uh, of, um, you know, surviving. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, License to Drive says, suggestions on motor size for Tiny Trainer on 3S. Uh, 1404, 6,000 kV is the only uh, motor that, for me, had anywhere near enough power. Every other motor was way too low kV. The other motors make it feel like the, the actual racer, but the actual racer feels like shit. It's a super underpowered lump of dog nuts. So, um, yeah, unless you're building it for a spec league, where everybody's going to be on the same builds. Um, yeah, 1404-6000. Uh, Ken Hill says, remember the ESCs are already on 48K, just not licensed. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not going to license this one. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, because the, the let, at least for a little bit. For a little bit, I'm not going to license it. Blizzard FPV with five Canadian dollars. Rip Squeak BQE in the house, indeed. Thank you, Blizzard. Uh, very, very, very cool of you. Um, and then Athix FPV can't wait for the bottle rocket motors. Uh, I think the ZZA would handle them best. They have eight amp ESC, twelve amp burst. Bob markets it as six due to the board wiring limitations. What are the uh, bottle rocket motors, Athix? I haven't even heard of that. Uh, okay, and is the OSD proper? All right, I'm going to show you guys my new. OSD trick. Instead of just having an OSD disable, this is my new hotness. You come in here to adjustments, which you have to turn on in expert mode. You put it on, uh, I'm putting it on my AUX2 channel. You enable it, you take the whole range, and then in the then apply, you put OSD profile selection via channel AUX2. I, I just do everything on AUX2. That's the switch that I want it on. Save it. And now check this out. In the OSD, you can use these multiple profiles. So for my first two switch positions, I want all these things. But for my my third switch position, which is OSD off, uh, I can just have warnings on. So if I'm flying the Tiny Whoop for footage and recording the DVR, um, uh, the only OSD that I'll get is towards the end of the battery when it when it flashes, hey, come home. Um, so yeah, this is the best way to uh, to be able to DVR some footage without ugly OSD on it. The other problem with OSD being in your footage is that um, if you go to cut, they're, like, it's so obvious because the OSD completely... It's like, oh, the battery's almost dead, and the battery's full, and then the battery's almost dead again, and now in this clip, the battery's full again. Like, it just looks ridiculous. Uh, VTX, hopefully they have set up. LED strip, ooh. I do not... Ha I, I am, like, the worst with these uh, with these LED strips. I, I, I just don't know how to use them. Um... Oh, the 27,000 KV. I didn't, they'll, nah, dude, they'll be fine on on anything. They're 0802s, right, Athix? You don't have to get any kind of special uh, uh, OSD for those. You'll be, you'll be, yeah. Or, or oh, OSD, Jesus. You don't have to get a bigger um, amp having AIO for those. They're going to be fine. You'll uh, be aight. you be aight. No, it doesn't have it. So I think this will fly. Ah, shit. No, it won't because I didn't reverse the fucking propellers. Oh, oh god damn it. Oh my god, what a difference. Wow. Alright. Let's see. Hopefully at least the motors are in the right locations. They are. That one's spinning back. It's spin it's the Alright, so motor one is wrong. Motor two is right. Oh fuck, the ESC just blew up. What the fuck? No! No, no, no. 
Smells like electrical fire. Um, yeah, as soon as I uh, told Motor 3 to spin, smoke poured out of the, uh, of the goddamn AIO. So, that means three. Oh, you know what probably happens? I'll bet ya I fucked up. And I'll bet ya. Nope. No, that's a perfectly clean set of motors. Um Well I am done with the hummingbird AIOs. Uh, wow, fuck you! Well, I mean, it's blown up. We might as well blow it all. Uh, I didn't totally see, like. Oh, man, god damn it. Why? 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 Why you gotta do me like that? Look out, watch for smoke. Ready? Ah! It came out of the LED area. There's probably a MOSFET down there that just fucking blew up. God damn it, dude. <laughs> Thank you, Blizzard. <laughs> Thanks, Sinakis. Uh... Alright, so here, here's what I can say. These, these make some fucking jam, yo. These motors make some goddamn power with these bigger propellers. Let me, uh... Uh, how can I do this? Oh, if I unplug... Oh, I can't unplug it. Uh, I just want to get motor three out of the mix. You know, what's interesting is that the LED down here where the smoke came from is like really dim. Uh, that's a little odd. I mean, the board's fucked regardless, so yeah, none of it, nothing really matters. I really want to spin... I'll just spin them up individually. Uh, I, I wanted to spin all three up to see, like, the... Oh, God, yes. These make power, bro. These make considerably more power than the, um... The 0802 high KVs. That's, uh... That makes me happy. Yeah, so this rig will make some good power once I get a an AIO on it that works. Uh, this is the third hummingbird that's blown up. And two of those three hummingbirds were replacements that they sent me. I bought, I bought the whole quad uh, just to get the AIO. And then that one blew up. And I, um, I emailed them and I, and I explained what happened. And they sent two as replacements and now both of those replacements have failed. So... It's kind of the... Yeah, I, I don't... I don't think I'm going to bother them again. The, the Z's doesn't have the, um, the receiver or the VTX built in. God damn it! Akira men da yo! あきらめんなよ。
く目標達成できるだからこそ知恵の日だ Huge thanks to Blizzard FPV, AIO Fund, $35 Canadian dollars, Zanakis FPV, $10 Super Chat. You guys are awesome. Much appreciated.、Um, I have a.、Uh, I will.、Uh, I'm going to slam this. I'm, I'm going to pull this apart and I'm going to throw it back together、uh, tomorrow because I really just want to fly it.、Uh, this is probably not going to be the setup that stays in it, but. Uh, I got. If I can fucking find it. Maybe I lost it. Maybe I, maybe I won't be doing this if I lost it.、Um, I picked up one of the V2、uh, newbie drone. There it is. Alright, see,、so yeah, I'm gonna use this.、Uh, this is the V2 newbie drone.、Uh, you know, their nice board. The, the Hummingbird is their cheaper board.、Uh, this is their. What the fuck is that about? You guys want to see something weird? Look at this. I didn't notice this. this. I don't have a fucking clue as to what this is. Look at this creepy shit. Hold on. Ready? What the fuck is that? You guys seen anything like that before? Wait, wait. Look at that! What is that? Was somebody like practicing soldering on my board at the factory? What the hell is that? I wonder if it's like some kind of cooling? Right? Isn't that crazy? Look at that shit. Right? What's、uh, RHW, B Man? I don't know what that is. So, yeah, this is their new board.、Um, it's got both the VTX and the receiver built in, which is kind of cool.、Um, so, this will be a very quick little、uh, build. I don't know where this is going to. Maybe it'll stay in this. Who knows?、Um, I don't really know where this one's going to end up.、Uh, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I don't know. But. I'm excited. I do know that. I know that I'm excited. Not sure what I'm excited for, but I am excited.、Uh, I think I'll do this other shorty on here.、Uh, so, yeah. All right. Oh, God. Now it's broken. Great.、Uh, so, stay tuned. I'll,、uh, I'll get this little shit bag up in the air tomorrow and we'll see what's what. We'll see what's going on then. All right. <laughs> ah, focus. Not focused on life.、Uh, Blizzard FPV says 5G.、Uh, B Man says the Hummingbird is the AIO that sucks donkey dicks. Is it really? Is that like a known thing? And I'm, I'm coming into the game late as hell.、Uh, and then Rick Spapeta says, does Prep Drone. What the fuck is Prep? Oh, Pyro Drone. Or iFlight, make an AIO that will work for you.、Uh, no, they don't, Rick. Not, not that I've seen.、Uh, the, the AIOs that, that are, are what I'm looking for、uh, are the Happy Model with the VTX and the receiver built in,、uh, this newbie drone here,、uh, the newbie drone version 1, because you can then run an external receiver, which is fine.、Um, And the Beta FPV 1S,、uh, which three, no, only two of those have failed on me.、Um, so, yeah, I've had quite the failure rate with Whoop AIOs lately. <laughs> But that's the game, man. I.、Uh, Nothing you can do. Dauntless H with the last comment of the night. Well, it looks like we both have enough AOs to, to insert and do a load of laundry. Oh, oh God. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging. How many,、uh, how many of you 
fine. 80? Wow. All right. So so we're growing, guys. We're, we're growing again, which is good. Um, uh, th this uh, thing that I'm doing here has been flatlined for about three months, and uh, I was starting to get really, really worried. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're growing a little bit again, and, and that's all... Um, that's all I want to say. As, as long as we have a little bit of, of growth, um, that's good. Uh, slow, steady growth is a good thing. So, that's awesome. Uh, Athic says there were over 100. Damn, that's great. Um, thanks to all you guys. Uh, let's make it... Uh, let's, let's make it 100 at the end of the stream. Uh, share and shit. <laughs> Click buttons, do some sharing if you don't mind. Um, the bigger it gets, the less of me you guys will have access to. <laughs> Blizzard FPV with a purple donger to growth. License to drive. Thanks for the motor suggestions. You're welcome, sir. I will see you guys on Wednesday. Uh, 661 says, watch my Rip Squeak videos on YouTube. 661, send me some links. Um, I'll see you guys on Wednesday. We'll do some whooping. And, um, that's about it. Thanks for hanging. Here's some, uh, hey, here's some, uh, some more flight footage. like to try to give you guys something that make it till the end. Something. Just a little something. Brian Ladbraw, thank you for the two ninety nine. dollars You're the man. You're the man. No, don't go yet. Wait. I got footage for you. I got footage for you. Um, oh, here's a good one. This is me flying uh, Joshua Motors on Joshua Props on a Joshua camera. Blizzard FPV, Rip Squeak 3 on my channel. Send me some links. CID FPV on Facebook and Instagram. License to Drive says watch this when you're done streaming. I will. I'll see you guys Wednesday. Here's a couple minutes of, uh, of flying. Enjoy it or just go to sleep. <laughs> Probably want to go to sleep. I'm not that good. I'm all right. All right, these are Joshua Barton. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Look at this uh, fucking guy. Got... Who's this um... shithead? All right, guys, be good.
build power is definitely different than what I'm used to. 2306 is...